told you about Matt Watts. He's the guy who is going to get it done for them on the offensive end, but they do have some help for him. And look for off the bench Myron Epps to come in. He's the second leading scorer and a big rebounder for San Diego State. Our starting lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Rick Majeris, 14 and 1 against the Aztecs. And of course, at the University of Utah has enjoyed remarkable success, not the least of which that championship game appearance last year. Utah's starting lineup remains unchanged as it has virtually all year long. Jeremy Killian, the local product, has started all but one game for the Utes, and he will certainly start again tonight. Jensen Metola Altoff and Andre Miller round out the starting five for the University of Utah. Just a reminder, of course, we've got college basketball now, but we have the uh, the NBA on the horizon and our first home court video magazine will air here on KJS TV tomorrow night at 1030 when we will have Jerry Sloan, we'll have Scott Layden, we'll also have Tim Howells, Utah Jazz General Manager, and that will be live tomorrow night at 1030 right here on KJS TV, so be sure and join us for that. But meantime, we've got college basketball action, Western Athletic Conference style, and we are just about ready to get underway. There's a look at Fred Trenkel, his son Brady is on this team. A young man who uh, has overcome some health problems, and we'll detail that for you a little bit later, but Brady Trenkel, who was born in Twin Falls, Idaho, and of course, his dad now in his fifth year, and he's not gonna show us his face again. He's getting his game face on. The San Diego State Aztecs, and Frank, are playing in this arena, a new arena, Cox Arena, it seats a little over 12,000, beautiful facility for basketball, and they hope to get this program to match the facility soon. Well, you know, for, for years, they struggled playing downtown in the sports arena and in Patterson a, a gymnasium this is a basketball arena and Trinkle has a young team that I think he'll have this basketball program going before long most people in the college basketball ranks will wonder that this is a sleeping giant Steve a great university a beautiful campus and obviously wonderful weather I sometimes wonder why every great player in America doesn't come here to San Diego State well, you look at Nate Althoff and Hano Mitchell, the Utes are out on the floor, and the Aztecs are just about ready to break their huddle. There's a look at Coach Rick Majeris, as we detailed for you earlier. He will be taking his team as the first WAC road trip. They'll leave here tomorrow, fly to Hawaii, and play on ESPN Big Monday on Monday night, and then come right home after the game. So it's kind of a tough road trip for this Utah squad. And we're about ready for tip-off. Tonight's tip-off is brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. It's all within your reach with AT&T. And we are set to go as the two teams exchange pleasantries at center court. You know, Steve, uh, college teams are very fragile. I like opening on the road if I'm a professional basketball team, get your team together. But in college basketball, it's so easy to get losses on the road. So this will be a big test these next couple of games for the Utes. Arnold Metola jumps against 6'9", Marcelo Correa, the Brazilian national who plays for this Aztec team. And Wow, that, uh, I don't know whether Correa wasn't ready. He's still involved in Brazilian time, but he never went up for that tip. Utah no, control. control. And this is a zone, and usually they play man-to-man. -man. They're a very uh, apt man-to-man -man team, but uh, somehow the Utes have got the reputation that they don't handle that zone very well, but they have lately, so uh, I think the Aztecs may be in for a surprise. Right now, it's a 2-3 zone. Kelly of the local product buries the three to get Utah underway. Well, of course, he starts off fine. He waited. He was very patient got squared away on the basket, and that's a big basket for the young man because it gets him off to a good start here at home. Crowd on its feet until the Aztecs score. First Aztec shot is off the mark with Jensen pulling down the defensive board. Utah will look to run. Yeah. Push the pace a little bit and try and catch the Aztecs sleeping. Well, that's what you do against the zone. You try to get back before the zone gets set. Utah's two for two from beyond the arc as Miller gives the Utah six a 6-0 lead. And that's exactly what happened. The zone dropped back so far that they left Miller right with an uncontested jumper, and he made it. And the shot was so good by Matt Watts. Yeah, pretty good shot. Was on top, just didn't go in, and there's the fast break. Gillian. Opts not to use the glass of just that quickly. Utah's off to an 8-0 lead, and Fred Trinkle says, I want a 20 Oh, yeah, Trinkle, Trinkle made a good decision right there. He doesn't like what he sees. It's not so much that the Utes ju jump off to a 6-0 lead, but the baskets were so easy, Steve. Well, on a 3-for-3 from the floor, say, if you've got the thirst, Mount Olympus has the water. Pure and protected from a source high on Mount Olympus. It's been the home team favorite since 1898. There is a difference. Mount Olympus waters pour it down. Here's All a right. look at the last basket, and Miller, head up, Frank. Yeah, you know, he makes the good pass, and Killian makes a good decision here. He doesn't test the defense. He stops. 
knowing that if he misses the shot, it's going to be knocked in uh, off the rebound. So you're just good decision making. You know, it's one thing about playing. I always feel this way, Steve. We talked about it before. You don't play zone just once in a while. If you're a zone team, you're a zone team. And uh, they're basically a man-to-man -man team that thought they were gonna come out here and fool the Utes. Watch for them to go back to man-to-man -man on the next time down. Blocked inside. Defensively, Utah going up to challenge. Myron Epps, who has come in, and a foul is called inside. But watch it again, Nate yeah. Althoff stepping yeah. over. Well, the ball goes inside. And you know, he goes up strong and, and he gets fouled, but you know, it's, it, Coach Trenko has to feel good. After a timeout, it's always good to have something happen that's positive. And Epps is only a 47% free throw shooter. All the fans stand here until San Diego scores. And they may be standing for uh, a while. They may be very tired before this night is over. Well, it's a team that only scores 67 and a half points a game. They're horrendous from the field. They're horrendous from the free throw line. It is just not a good shooting team. They break the ice as Epps hits one of two. Now, the applause wasn't for the point. It was for the fact that now they could sit down. Well, I was wrong about that. Now they're in a uh, three-quarter court semi-trap. It looks like they want to win some time. But, you know, Andre Miller is, has become a, a, such a key uh, keeping the poise and, and the balance of this team. And Miller rebounds his own miss and goes right back up and has it blocked that time by Correa. But Miller gets it back gets again. Gets it back again. And, you know, he... He has, you know, he doesn't get, he, I remember a couple of years ago when the team traps at him, and he get all upset and flustered. Now he has such great poise out there, such great leadership qualities, and they move the ball from side to side. Gillian three off the rim. Jensen cannot handle the rebound. It goes out of bounds. Yeah, and I, one thing is, you see, and Rick Majerus is saying, and now get the ball inside, you know. If you're going to say, you know, they've hit a couple of outside shots. You don't want to get false encouragement to think that every time you take one, they're going to go in. You don't want to make this an OUT game in which you're going to take all the outside shots and try to beat that team on the road. Watts with a basketball to Correa. To Epps, rather, and outside, Okotier misses. And the ball goes out of bounds. The Aztecs turn it over. Okotier uh, likes to shoot the ball off his uh, the heel of his hand, and he doesn't get good rotation. He loses some of his strength. Good, two good looks for him at the uh, basket. Neither of them uh, he was successful. Coach Trinko's decided to stay in the zone, Steve. I guess he's satisfied with what he sees. Charlie needs to one edge. Good ball rotation for Utah right now. They'll swing it, look for Althoff as he flashes across the lane. Pass is challenged and knocked out of bounds by San Diego State. David yeah. Bromowitz getting a hand on it, but Utah retains. Yeah, it's a 2-3 zone. They're conceding the outside shot, more or less. You're going to get those all night, so you better make them. And they're, they're uh, packing it in. Well, if you rebound, you can get away with that. And Utah right now is offensive rebounding. Oh, Miller makes a great move. He can't finish, but all top tries to put it back in, and now it comes out. That was a good off, uh, effort on, on the parts of the Utes, and Althoff getting a good offensive rebound. And Rick Majerus goes to the bench. Harvey set to check in as Epps goes inside and can't get it to drop. Again, the Utes doing a great job on the board, but every team is out rebounded this Aztec team. Killian, nice position underneath and left alone, and Jeremy Killian has five. Well, Utah leads 10-1. The Aztecs have had tough uh, luck on some of their shots. They're getting pretty good looks at the basket. The ball hasn't gone down for them, but they do a very poor job of retreating on defense. Oh, Cody, a two-point basket. Well, he adjusted his shot then, got good rotation on the ball. But this team, I just watched them go back then, Steve. They do not change ends real well. But young teams usually do. I mean, you should be able to get them to run back on defense. They show a little bit of half-court pressure, and then they pack it in. They're going to give up outside shots for the years. Killian's three won't go. Killian tails the shot, and now Jensen recovers to Miller, who penetrates, goes hard to the basket. Contact, no call. The Aztecs want to run. Yeah. on Jensen. Watts off the glass. Can he score? Well, we talked about him before the game. I like what I saw then, Steve. He certainly has a win. Yes, he did. Up. He's got good quickness, and he used the board very cleverly then. All right. Now they're back. They started in a 1-3-1. One, one, a little uh, pressure at half court to win some time, not to steal the basketball. And, of course, they drop back. They pack this zone in, giving the outside shot like that to the Utes. And the Utes have not been putting them down at regularity. Yeah, those are open looks at the basket. Uh-oh. Correa underneath his challenge. Now, you're going to see uh, Rick Majerus probably call a timeout very quickly because 
he's got to be concerned that his team wasn't getting back on defense then. They were beating down the floor. Now you'll see it here. There's the look by Watson. Goes all the way down. Nobody turned around. No, nobody turned around. They didn't know where the ball was. And the big thing on defense in transition is always know where the ball is and where your man is. You locate the ball first, then locate your man. Get back and defend the goal. Don't let people get behind you. And Frank, that's the second personal on Nate Altoff of Norman, normally, and I think he's going to be coming out. Because when you get two fouls and a half on a Richard Kingston, you'll sit in yeah. the first half. And so Miller goes out. And he's going to be Harvey checking in for that. Bill Cullen checks in for Nate Altoff. Well, uh, Nate at that time fouled because he didn't get back on defense. He paid a price for it. And the two foul rule in the first quarter is a good one, I think. Three in the, in the, if you pick up three by the half, you're out for the half. Now, Harvey, you'll see him play the uh, point guard position. That's what's great about Harvey coming off the bench. You can bring him in at three different positions. And there's timeout taken, 15-14 left in the first half. The Aztecs, who trailed 10-1, are now within three. This is my life. I have five kids. Maggie, Katie, Molly, Aaron, and Ryan. I want to be a lawyer, but there aren't any law schools where I live. So twice a week, after I get the kids off to school, I go to law school in another state. Southwest has lots of flights, so I get back in time to tuck my kids into bed. Hey, for ingenuity. My kids take the bus to school. I take the plane. You are now free to move about the country. At the new Dodge, we're full of ideas. Example, a $700 plus package packed with ideas like power locks, power windows, heated power mirrors, and more at no extra charge on the roomy cab forward Dodge Stratus. Add the subtraction of $1,000 cash allowance and you have the best idea of all. Less money, more Stratus. Now select the cash allowance or low 1.9 financing on Stratus. With AT&T Digital One Ray, this isn't just any phone. It's my, hey Rob, how's the powder in Utah phone? My, I'll take the red. No, make that teal phone. My, how are you doing in college phone? My, can you deliver the piano on Tuesday phone? My, Casey scored a goal phone. The world of wireless has changed. AT&T Digital One Rate. No roaming or long distance charges across all 50 states. So now AT&T can make your wireless phone your only phone. Beginning January 25th, KJS TV and UPN bring to life the popular comic strip Dilbert. For years, he's been the poster. Seven right here on KJS TV. Steve, if I could make a suggestion tomorrow, you ladies out there in the listening audience that are Ute fans, your old man's going to be a couch potato watching <laughs> football. Grab the kids, go up to the university at Huntsman Center at 12 o'clock and see the Lady Utes play. They play Hawaii. It's a, it's a conference game. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. Leave the old man on the couch, <laughs> all right? You know, with his bottle of butt and his, uh, and his, his potato chips and get up and enjoy live action all right <laughs> ladies get up and follow the lady Utes. there Don't you be. go That's... they got a good team this year yeah, steve a lot of exciting young players well the aztecs stay in the zone and uh harvey takes the point position as we protect it and moves the ball from side to side he's got a lot of quickness there it goes inside first time that i i think uh Bedloff has handled the ball in this ball yeah, game it's it it his first touch and yeah. five minutes in but he scores up well, he'll score a will against this team, I believe. And you got to get him a lot of touches. I, I think he's an important cog in this team going a long way this season. He's got to get at least 20 shots a game. Oh, 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 oh. Ball will go, and Harvey has the rebound for Utah. Yeah, see, they don't go back on defense very well. I don't like the way they, they transition games. You know, uh, I'm sure that Coach Hunkel is, is going to realize that, too. Young teams usually change ends very well. Harvey with the jumper. What a nice shot. Comes in and makes his presence yeah. felt. Yeah, he, he's, he's probably the best athlete on the team. And uh, he can be a great defender. And uh, has uh, what I like is he's playing under control. Oh, I don't Cody know if they do that. His blocks just put his head down, trying to run through two people, and Harvey blocks from behind, and he's called with a foul. Wow, I don't know where the refs went on that one. Holy cow, something happened. I don't know whether it was a charge or what, but, you know, he got knocked down pretty good. Last basket a moment ago from Tony Harvey on the offensive end for Utah. Catch and shoot. The three-pointer. 
And Tony Harvey. Again, getting into the scoring column early. Well, you know, it looks like there's nothing that Tony Harvey can't do. We know he's a great jumper. He can run the floor. He's got a good build on him. But this. now he's starting to show us some outside shooting ability. Right? Watch this is Watch is a 61% free throw shooter. This is the first. You know, I, I still, you know, and I know I get used to being around professional like this, but I never know why kids can't shoot free throws. All you have to do is practice it. It should be the simplest part of the game. They extended defense after the make. Again, yeah. that three-quarter press with the people, yeah. potential trap. Yeah, people wonder why is, is that they're trying to win time, and they do. You know, they take some time off the clock. Hoping it breaks that momentum. It breaks the momentum down. And, uh, you know, of course, we saw that uh, done earlier in the season by Weber State, and, uh, and there was some effect. And later on, the trap became very aggressive. Harvey three won't go. That time the Utes overloaded the side of the zone and flashed it across to Harvey and a ball knocked out of bounds and a whistle and foul called. Usually what happens eh, when you're moving the ball from side to side against the zone, you like that jump shot to come from the foul line extended. In other words, that part of the of the foul line that goes all the way imaginary to the sideline into the baseline. Rather, because it's an easier ball to rebound. It gives you better bounce. When you shoot from the middle, you never know where that ball is going to go. Andre Miller is back into the Utah lineup. So you have him and Harvey as a combination back there, which gives them great defensive balance. And Harvey has drawn Watts defensively right and, now. And, you know, right away you see that the defensive uh, intensity is picked up. Well, Cody, a high bounce. Ball is actually touched by Watts in the Ooh, cylinder. Yes. Should have been basket interference, but no call, but it didn't go in. And Miller flashes down and scoops for a basket. Well, that time again, they took advantage of the Aztecs slowly getting down. Yeah, that, that, that's the only thing. I, I, You know, you can miss shots and everything, but there's no excuse for not getting back on defense. Their transition game, the defensive transition is awful. It's Dante Wilson working against Miller, gets into the lane, and Jensen pulls down a rebound. And they go again. Outlet to Miller. There's another fast break opportunity. And Harvey finishes on the trailer. Good heads-up play by Miller instead of forcing the back to the trailer to Harvey. I remember my first coach in a... In a, in a uh, Playground situation was a coach by the name of Don Kennedy, who later coached St. Peter's, was a wonderful coach. Said the most important thing in basketball, Steve, is defensive balance. Don't give up easy baskets. I never forgot that, you know? Correa turns and scores. That was a nice look by the young man from Brazil. Especially if you only average 66 points a game, you better play good defense and get back on defense and not give up easy baskets or you're going to have a 2-13 and 13 record. Oh, that's what they have. <laughs> that's right. Jensen's been quiet so far, but he, that's, he plays within himself. He does a good job defensively. He seems to step up when you need baskets. What a great pass by Harvey. And the finish. I wonder if the fans realize that suddenly we see Miller at the wing and Harvey still at the point. A little different look from uh, Rick Majerus. That's Watts to the basket. He made a great move that time. Had Harvey leaning one way and then went inside and pulled up and squared up. And as you said, Frank, in the pregame show, that quick release. Yes, he's, he is able. He shoots the ball while he's going up rather than at the height of his jump. He's, a, he's an excellent leaper. See, there's uh, Miller at the wing and Harvey still at the point. And Harvey outside. Boy, his nice touch. It just wouldn't go down that yeah. time. Ball goes out of bounds. And it is off San Diego State. Well, hey, it hits the ground. I still don't like shots coming from the point position, though, Steve. And a timeout is taken on the floor with 11-14 left in the first half. Utah with a 21-12 lead over San Diego State. Silbert is coming to a cubicle near you. After I take over the world, I'll put everyone in little boxes with labels. That's impossible. No one would accept that type of humiliation. Now get out of my cubicle. You mean your box. Cubicle, box. Cubicle, box. Cubicle, box. Cubicle. The countdown to Primetime's most talked about new animated series has begun. Dilbert is coming to a cubicle near you. Box. Coming January 25th to KJAZZ TV. When you pursue an Olympic dream, you are redefining human ability. As you test the limits, you have to be willing to fail. If not, the dream ends. It's in getting back up that new horizons are discovered. It's your life. It's your health. Take control. Regents Blue Cross Blue Shield of Utah. 
The wait is over. It's here. GMC's all-new Sierra, built for all that Utah has to offer. Sierra will take your family to your favorite recreation spot with ease and still travel the city streets in style. For the life you lead, the all-new GMC Sierra is now at your Utah Intermountain GMC dealer. GMC Sierra sets the standard with leading-edge features, stylish, comfortable, economical to operate at an affordable price. Your Utah Intermountain GMC dealer and your new GMC Sierra are waiting for you now. What are you waiting for? Well, a moment ago, Utah burning the Aztecs. Let's take a look at it, Frank, on our Larry H. Miller Telestrator. Well, one of the things you see, they're clustering here. They're looking to get the, the uh, rebound. That doesn't happen, but that's okay. What you're going to see is the pitch out, all right, down this way, all right, and then Miller is going to penetrate. Metalar actually should have cleared out to one side or the other. When he didn't do that, the slow retreat, they paid a price for it. Not only did they get back slowly, Steve, but they didn't really play tough defense once they got there. Telestrator brought to you by Larry H. Miller Auto Group, where we're doing whatever it takes to provide an environment of total customer satisfaction. Shooting percentage, Utah at 45%. But not more importantly, Frank, than the percentages there are the number of attempts, 20 to 12, in Utah's favor. San Diego State's just not getting the ball to the basket. No, they're not getting the ball to the basket. They're not getting any easy shots themselves. I think their idea was to get back, play zone, and maybe slow uh, Utah down and use some clock. They're in a man-to-man -man now for the out-of-bounds play. All right, we'll see if they get back into zone. It looks like they are going to play zone. And uh, that's okay, but you better get back on defense, and you also better take care of the basketball. You can't give up this many uh, easy shots, uh, and by that I mean the layups coming down the floor in the fast break. Well, Miller flashed a high post, got the ball a little bit late from Harvey, but now Jensen has a wide open look and he can't vary it from outside. That time, if had Miller been able to get the ball a half a step sooner, he had a chance to turn, but Tony Harvey a little bit late getting in the ball in a high post position. Yeah, and actually Jensen could have taken the ball to the basket that time, I think, without it even looking for the jump shot. But it's easier to take a jump shot, and you have a tendency to want to do that, to take the easy way. Oh, he's an excellent outside shooter. Oh, now Cody, you, eh? Yeah, you got... Uh, Kill Killian and uh, uh, Cullen in the game now, the big guy, big freshman, and uh, he's working at his uh, defensive shot game. Shot clock's at four, Frank. Abramowitz, uh, he's gonna, they're going to lose the shot clock. Yep. A shot clock violation that time, and as Utah's defense just held him without Oh, that attempt. was great defense. Great defense. Cullen did a good job on defense, uh, taking the ball, uh, the ability to pass the ball inside. Metalot did an excellent job of fronting his man. And here's that little soft... Uh, uh, pressure, which I think once in a while is all right, but you can't as a steady diet. They're gonna they're gonna adjust to it, and they have. They've gotten into a flow. Metala, Metala said to himself, "I haven't had a shot in a long time, so I think I'll take one here." That was a little bit out of his range there. You could see he forced it just a little bit, but he deserves to shoot. He works hard on defense. He bangs the boards. Derekoff hits a three as he comes in. Well, Harvey slipped and fell down and could got back to him late. Yeah, that's Jeffrey Barakoff, the freshman out of Whittier, California. And he scores. But Frank, Harvey's had a problem all night slipping. I don't know whether his shoes are dusty or what, but he's fallen down several times tonight defensively. He comes back offensively, shows there's no problem there, but you kind of wonder, watch him next time Barakoff goes through. He's fallen two or three times just following a trailer through. Well, usually it's a shoe problem when that happens. Uh, I don't know that it is, but... Uh, he certainly doesn't have a problem with his balance. There, the ball got inside pretty good. Correa has the ball knocked away, and See, now Miller. All right, they got back a little better that time. Miller didn't hand, handle the ball real clean, but the Utes, uh, certainly in their scouting report, realized that there, there is a weakness there and are pushing the ball faster than probably we've seen them do all year. Everybody's on the perimeter now for Utah. They look for the cutter inside. Final metal of flashes, but Harvey shoots the three. Well, that did everything but go down, but there's Alex Jensen to clear the offensive block. Yeah, see, that's when you shoot from the angle. Those balls are a lot easier to rebound than when you shoot from the middle of the floor, Steve. And Jensen, of course, a great offensive rebounder. He has a great feel for the game, a great judgment as to where that ball's going to come off. Utah oh. with a 10-point lead. Barakoff, air ball, yeah. and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, Barakoff rushed the shot. Harvey faked Harvey. Harvey made a mistake in leaving his feet on the fake of a jump shot, and uh, he paid a price for it, but uh, he couldn't put the shot down. Jensen sits down, but a moment ago, watch him on the offensive rebound. There's the Harvey shot, and watch Jensen. Flashes to the yeah, he... near side, grabs the ball, just wrestles it out of Correa's hand, 
and goes up and puts it in. The key to offensive rebound is to run to the spot that you think the ball is going to come off and not be looking up, and he did that perfectly. It's not guessing. Most of those shots will come off on the opposite side, about 70%. Oh, Killian flashes the lane. Can't get the basket to drop, and here comes Barakoff as he leads the charge. Nice pass to uh, Killian, and he almost had the shot. He got it up there. Outside shot won't go from a Cotier. And an offensive rebound basket by the Aztecs. Yeah, you know, one thing they do, they work on the offensive board probably as good as any team we've seen this year outside of Texas. They really go after the missed shot, but they pay a price in the back. Now, see them here? They go after it. They battle a much larger uh, physical uh, Utes, and, and this is one particular time that it pays off. There it is again. There it is again. Barakoff is the guy that yeah. gets it, well, puts he, it back. He's been all right now. You hit an outside shot, now he gets to the boys. He's got a nice build on him. And, Frank, he's the guy who says his two favorite players are Danny Ainge and John Stockton. Well, he's got a firm grasp of the obvious. He almost <laughs> broke the glass yeah, he there. He certainly did, but And he has counts. to laugh himself. It certainly counts, and we'll take a timeout. 7.52 remaining in the half, and the Aztecs, trailed by 10, are now within seven. When it comes to your car, you know who to see. selection and service you know who to see after all you know this guy hi I'm Kevin Jenkins when we're watching the ball games in our home we always make sure we have plenty of fruit trays and veggie trays along with 100% juice thanks, Jeff. hey thanks Dad. hey guys save me a seat down there you know my kids love apple juice it's important to eat five servings of fruits and vegetables every single day for better health it's easier than you think just six bites or whatever you can hold in your hand. I'm Kevin Jenkins, your produce greensmith, with the tip of the day. Dad, the game's starting. Hey guys, here I come. Ah. On the highway of life, it's nice to meet an honest man. Talk to me. Voice Dream Wireless gives you more. With 10 cents a minute weekdays. Oh, that's good. More for your money. Guaranteed. Great. And weekends? Do you like parties? Now zero cents a minute. We'll have a great time. I guarantee it. So get voice stream and get more from life. Guaranteed. Hello. Utes not able to shake the Aztecs completely. They led by 10, and they San Diego State came right back. They trailed by 7 now with 7.52 left in the half. And a reminder that our next television game right here on KJAZ TV, Utah basketball, will once again on the road as Utah takes on a UTEP Miners January 30th, 7 o'clock, right here on KJS TV. So we invite you to join us. Don Haskins, the Bear, down south, Frank. And uh, always a lot of fun. He is. He's always a character. And we'll be bringing you that game as you look at Barakoff, who completed the three point play a moment ago. Tonight's game is, is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Fly Southwest Airlines. Yeah, you know, if you look at this game, and, uh, and the Aztecs are still in it, is that there's an awful lot of outside shooting, you know? And the difference, of course, the, uh, the missed shots, uh, outside shots by the Utes, uh, uh, the Utes have done a great job of getting the misses, doing a good job on the offensive boards at the rate of about seven to two. And when you get second chances like that, you're going to be leading by eight or nine points against most teams. A good Six. ball movement there. Another outside shot. And a three, and Killian needed to take the three. Yeah. Majerus nods his ascent to that because there was only five seconds. The clock was running remaining. down. But, you know, Steve, I'm going to tell you, somewhere along the line, if the Utes persist, all right, in being willing to shoot on the perimeter, they're going to lose some night that they shouldn't because... You have to have good balance of inside play against, uh, yeah, that was a misplay. Yeah, and, uh, Andre Miller looked to pass the ball in yeah. traffic, realized that he yeah. had people coming trailing, and he couldn't get a clean bounce pass, and so he double dribbled. Yeah, dribble again, against uh, against man-to-man, -man, you look uh, three to one, the two to one. All right, here he is. He watch, he wants him. to throw yeah. that pass to Jensen. Uh, now watch, he, he picks that, it up to throw yeah. it, and then went, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, he knew it right away, and the ref knew it, and everybody in the stands knew it, so those things happen. You know, he looked up, and uh, he, usually he'll make the right play. At least you get a chance to get back and play defense properly. Turnovers, Aztecs two, Utah one. 
Rebound kept alive by Joe Mann, the 6'10 center, a freshman who came in, but Utah has the loose ball. I was watching Mann in practice. He uh, he works real hard, Steve. He's a hard worker. He's a great big guy, too. Yep, 6'10, he got a big body on him. Big body, short arms. Can't reach the change in his pocket. He has to bend over. Yeah, good ball movement now against the zone. There's still, Estex is still willing to stay in the zone. Uh, but I think you've got to have good balance about how many outside shots you take. They're going in tonight. So well, it looks pretty now. good, they but some early. night they won't. That's right. That's why they're shooting 42% at uh, the last break. Andre Miller with the three-point play. And Andre has eight points. It's one of the reasons. I don't think, uh, maybe you correct me, I don't think the youths have been to the foul line yet, have they? Uh, not sure that they have either, Frank. I'll tell you right now, uh, right now it looks like the Aztecs are going to be fouled by Alex Jensen. Here's a look at the last basket from Andre Miller. Basically uncontested. See that? Nobody near him. There's not a guy near him. And uh, it's just like practice. Here comes Harvey back in for Killian. And now the inbounds play. And no, they have not been to the foul line. Frank. Yeah, see? And, and that shows something that you're not getting the ball inside and you're not doing any penetrating. Stats will lie a lot, but sometimes you can use them to motivate your team, too. Utah, though, is really defensively confusing oh. San Diego. State. Yes, they, they are. Right well, the offensive uh, flow. Rick told me last night, Steve, he says, we're winning because of great defense. And, I, you know, we said that the last broadcast, without a doubt. See, shot clock's down to 10. Yep. And they haven't even made so a So now you're forced to take a bad shot, you know? And that's a bad shot. Yep, exactly. That is an air ball. Bounced off Utah, heads up play with two seconds left on the shot clock by Correa. He bounced it off Methola. That was a heads up play. It was a Carl Malone play. How many times have we seen Carl do that? Now you're going to get a quick shot here. And it's rejected by Tyson Johnston, who's come into the Utah yeah. lineup. Tyson Johnston doesn't play a lot, but I like him. He's a, I think he's a good rebounder and good defender. Three-pointer short by Miller, and a quick release by Watts, but Utah gets back. These guys are not shy. They're, they're, they're trying to slow it down on the defensive end, but on offense, they run. And I think that's Coach Trinkle's way of saying that's what we're going to be in the future. Ball knocked out of bounds by San Diego State as Watts went to the basket, trying to go a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. That's frustration. You can see it on his face right now. He claps his hands. This kid's a competitor, but he's a senior. He is a senior. He'll be history. And there's only one other senior on this team. Actually, there are two others. But look at the three-point shooting percentages. Utah, 5 of 14. That's well, a lot of three-point attempts. They got some big, strong uh, young players in the back, so. Well, Utah, Utah has put up 15 three-point attempts right now. They've made five of them. Which That's is a lot, but that shows against the zone where they're going. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Aztecs. What happens with young teams that when they get behind, they want to catch up quick. They lose their patience. And it's all right, you know, before the clock starts to run down. You have to have patience with purpose. And that just means that you've got to get the ball inside. You've got to have good penetration. They have a tendency to move the ball around the outside and not get anything but a bad shot. Foul on the offensive rebound by Miller on the back, but good offensive position by Johnston down on the low block that time. Yeah, I like Ty I like Tyson Johnston. You know, he's he's going to be a player. He's got long arms. He's a big guy. You, you see him next to Jensen. He's he's uh, he's about four inches taller. He's going to help before the year's out and before his career's over. Well, Cody A going to the free throw line, a 52% free throw shooter. Tonight's University of Utah basketball game brought to you in part by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. As Myron Epps comes back into the lineup, Epps averaging almost uh, 11 points a game and 5.8 rebounds. He's their leading rebounder. But Okoye goes to the line to shoot. Four minutes to go. To, they get 18 points, and the Utes are, are creeping up to doubling the score. Of course, you know, I thought the Utes had started to arrive against BYU, Steve. They, you, you mentioned it. The great defense, the great patience on offense took a pretty good BYU team apart at the seams. Yeah, they did, and, you know, San Diego State played pretty well against BYU the other night down here. Well, they BYU... actually led the Cougars late in the game and then ended up uh, giving up a 12-2 run to lose this thing. But BYU uh, is an improving team, and you said Utah had played their best game of the season that night in the Huntsman Center. Yeah, they did, and they're, very, they're playing a very consistent game here also. Uh, BYU beat this team down here the other night in a close game. 
Uh, both teams are very similar. That they're counting on good young players, but BYU is going to lose some of those kids to go on missions. So over the long run, BYU is going to probably be better than the Aztecs. Correa committing a foul down low, trying to deny Johnston position, and Killian comes in for Utah. And Johnston will get a breather, so we'll see a little shift then in, in positions. Now you've got Killian, uh, Harvey, and Miller in, and I think Harvey will probably move to three at this well, point. Well, this is one of the advantages that uh, Rick Majerus has. He's got a good bench. He, Harvey can play a couple of different positions. You know, there's Miller playing the wing now. Got Killian on the other side. Good shooters at both ends. Little exchange there. Harvey goes into the middle. And that's a, a, that's, oh, that's that's a play. Yeah. That's a play. In sure. other words, what they did, they Flash exchanged the Miller and then he flashed the lane from the wing. And Harvey hits the turnaround. He's got those long arms, Frank. That's what allowed him to get off the shot that time. Well, Harvey and Miller both can play uh, inside and outside. In fact, I, I mentioned uh, to Rick one day, I said, you know, one of the advantages you have is that when you really need a basket, you really need something, you can always go inside to Miller. He's your best post up man. I think he is their best post player. See, uh, Coach Majerus how it's changing. He wants that ball to move around. He saw Harvey holding on to it just a little bit too long. And a foul called on a rebound underneath. I think Correa was the man who, well, let's see, maybe not. Was it Epps? That was a tough call, I'll tell you. If there was a foul there, it certainly wasn't one that was worth uh, all that. And as a timeout taken at the 316 mark, Tony Harvey takes a seat, but a moment ago, Tony Harvey elevated in the lane, and the Utes with a 13-point edge will be back. Now here's the long-range forecast for Sinclair Land. Well, it looks like some snow at higher elevations. And over here, ugh, it could get pretty warm. But whatever the weather, your car will run better with Sinclair gasoline because it's adjusted for each season. Take it from Dino, in every season, Sinclair is simply unbeatable. For an efficient, clean-burning Bryant furnace with natural gas by design, see Welsh Heating and Air Conditioning in Salt Lake City or Rescom Mechanical in Orm. Utes with a 13-point lead over the Aztecs, and Coach Fred Trenkel trying to get something going here. You know, his son is a senior on this team. Brady Trenkel, a senior guard, doesn't get a lot of playing time, but he talks about coaching his son and the principle of a father coaching his son. It's a difficult thing to do. Well, you know, it's very difficult coaching his son. I would never suggest anyone doing it. It's, it's very hard on the, it's much harder on the, 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 the kids than you would think. When my son, son gets old enough to play, my suggestion would be let him play for someone else. Well, there's a look at Brady Trenkel, a young man who had heart problems a couple of years ago, sat out last year, got the medical clearance to come back for his senior year, born in Twin Falls when his dad was coaching at the College of Southern Idaho. Of course, Fred replaced uh, Boyd Grant, who was a legend at CSI, and, uh, and he didn't do badly himself with Fred Trenkel winning a national championship there before moving on. Well, people predict he'll get it done here, too. He's got a young ball club. That, that One thing about him, they're hustling. Harvey for three. And Utah's three-point shots just won't go down. They're certainly, the Aztecs are conceding that look to them, and they will continue to do so as long as Utah misses. The Utes uh, are, are shooting 42% from the floor overall, but the Aztecs are only shooting 27%. And you see, the Aztecs have not scored a field goal in the last nearly five minutes of play. Yeah, and Utah has not been to the foul line. 
No, Utah has not gotten to the line. I mean, and the good news for the Aztecs is they're shooting 78% from the free throw line, and they're shooting less than 55 for the season as a team. Yeah, so that's their at, only bright spot. Well, you're seeing great defense here. They can't even penetrate at all. They don't, have, on the shot. they don't have a real inside post player that they can say, let's go to him. That and time, Correa leans in, draws a foul from Hano Metala. Yeah. And but he, again, they were they were looking at a short clock, Frank. They were looking at a short clock, and if you're going to look at a short clock, then you might as well get a shot that's inside rather than throwing one up. See, now you're going to see the pass go inside, a little look-away pass, and he takes it to the basket. And, of course, you know, it's questionable what kind of a foul that is because, it, you know, he leaned he in. He did a nice job of, of keeping Metala away with the elbow. He's a big, strong guy. Yeah, he is. Correa goes to the line at 225. He's a 70% free throw shooter, one of the better free throw shooters on this team. <laughs> Rattles that one home. He looks like he should be on a surfboard, doesn't he? I mean, he's he looks a, like he's a Brazilian uh, national, played on the Brazilian junior team. And by the way, they play a lot of great basketball in Brazil. It's one of the great Latin American countries. They love basketball down there. After soccer, it's their number one sport. And you saw Andre Miller go high for that rebound. <laughs> Utes with the lead in the basketball. 2.25 remaining here in the first half from Cox Arena, the campus of San Diego State University. Right, you're going to see a little exchange here. They get the ball inside. Oh, great position by Jensen and Metla with a one-touch pass. Yeah, Metla stepped out. And when he stepped out, the defense had to make a decision. And when they made that decision, it was the wrong one because Jensen slipped right in, made a nice little easy basket for himself. And those things are worked on. Uh, Tirelessly by uh, Rick Majerus. Abramowitz to Epps. Akodier with the offensive basket. Yeah, good rebound offensive basket. rebound and good basket for Akodier. You know, one of the things Rick Majerus, he also knew in the beginning of the year, he heard the rumors that the Utes did not play well against zones. So what did he do? He spent hours of practice time getting his team to be proficient against the zone and they have done an excellent job steve well and they've even played some zone as miller shoots from outside and it won't go they played well, some zone and and that's the best way to learn how well, to beat that's the zone. exactly what he said he said you know by playing zone we're learning what the weaknesses are what the strengths are miller Here's steals steal. the basketball ahead to jensen jensen bends off the defender misses the shot but Killian will run it down, and back is Miller on the trailer, and now Hano will join the offense. That's why a lot of times, that was a great pass. Uh, oh, Jensen, Metalo was open, Frank, and they missed it. Jensen took the ball to the basket hard enough, but you know, that's the time, you, if you can dunk it, you should dunk it. Killian's three, so he's doing what the locals were used to seeing him do in high school and college. Well, right he's so relaxed, it seems here. You know what I mean? I thought maybe he'd be up a little, he'd be a little uptight, but he isn't. He well, seems to be very loose, taking his time on the shots as another steal. Wow. Bad pass by Correa, and Harvey stepped into the lane. Oh, Harvey stepped right in there, guarding his own man, but taking the passing lane away. Excellent defense. Now they're going to hold the ball for one shot. Rick Majerus on some 20 second time out. There is six seconds. There are about six and a half seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. We have our Mount Olympus 20 second time out. Brought to you by Mount Olympus Spring Water, pure and natural. Utah's choice since 1898. There is a difference, as we know, because we're not drinking it on the road, Frank. Oh, tell me about it. You got a thirst? Mount uh, yeah, Olympus has Yeah, you answer. know what? I'll tell you, it starts with the bottle. I think it looks good. And you get it. It's a nice blue bottle, you know what I mean? It looks cold, you enjoy it. All right, let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines replay on the last three-pointer. There's Harvey with the basketball. He swings it to Killian, and Killian with a wide-open look. The replay brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Fly well, Southwest Hobby Airlines. Harvey sucked the defense to him, you see, and as they shifted, he looked up at the basket that made the quick pass to Miller, and they end up with the pass from Miller to Killian for the easy basket. That's teamwork, and it's all planned. They there, work there, at That's it. a big stat right there, Frank. An 11 to 1 difference in assists. Ball movement. Yeah, that's what, that's what they're shooting with the short clock. You know what I mean? You forget about assists when the clock is running out. They're going to hold now for the last shot. They're going to make sure they get something real good. Now, why teams do this is that while we got the basketball, they can't score. And you're also practicing here for another game in which it may be tied at this particular point. And you've got to show great control. Metalus pick, high post, little pick and roll. Miller keeps, uses glass and converts. Wow, and just the way it was diagrammed. Yeah, well, they cleared out the left side during the 20-second timeout. And Metalus rolled at just the right moment. And now the Utes steal the ball with three seconds, two seconds. Harvey goes up. Can he get? Oh, he has it stripped away. And there should be time on the clock. 
the clock shows zero, and I guess the official is going to let it go, but actually there were about five tenths when that happened. But Utah will go to the locker room leading 40 to 23. Let's watch it one more time, and maybe we can get a look at the clock. It's shot clock in the lower right-hand corner, and I watch the ball was stripped. Goes out of bounds. Actually, Harvey touched it with two tenths, so it is moot, the point, and it is 40 to 23. Utah at halftime. When we continue, we'll return you to our KJS studios and Audrey Piper. Gentlemen, we're history. But 20th century's unlikeliest pair of time travelers are having the time of their lives again. Excellent! Turning back the clock, turning up the volume, and turning history inside out. If they can survive the past, they just might have a future. How's it going, royal ugly dudes? Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, and George Carlin. Execute the bogus. Bill and Ted's oh, Excellent yeah. Adventure. Sunday at 6 on KJS TV. You see, David, I feel your feelings betray a feeling I felt about your feelings. And I felt our feelings had grown beyond feeling this way. What you felt Let's I face it, you're not always clear on a cellular phone. But now there's Sprint PCS, the only nationwide all-digital network for a new level of clarity. I'm going to Mexico with Brad. Sprint PCS. It's only for two weeks. Right now, just a dollar a day. While there are a lot of places where people buy parts for their car, the fact is more people choose AutoZone than any other. It's because we're the largest auto parts retailer in America, and they save money with our everyday low price. It's because more often than not, we have the parts they need in stock. And it's because we're the only place where they'll find a battery that's backed by a three-year free replacement guarantee. Which is why we say there's just no place better than AutoZone. We're just about ready to get underway, and boy, is this team loaded. They begin by attacking the right side. The team really looks hungry this year. Now they cut back left. Now he cuts right down the middle. He tackles it from behind, but it's too late. It's going, going, it's gone. Victory never tasted so good. Get Connie's Pizza, and everyone comes out a winner. Call 98 Great for Connie's authentic Chicago-style deep dish pizza delivered hot to your door. It's time for the Phillips 66 Halftime Report, brought to you by Phillips 66, high-octane, super-clean, unleaded gasoline. And at the break in San Diego, the score is 40-23, to 23, the running Utes with a huge lead over the Spartans. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the KJAZZ Studios. I'm Audrey Piper. Who's the best college basketball team in the nation? It's tough to argue UConn's number one ranking, but when you see the depth of Duke in action, well, let's just say it's too bad these two teams don't play each other in the regular season. This afternoon, Duke played host to Florida State and Damus Anderson, a cousin of Utah Jazz forward Shandon Anderson. Boy, his game looks pretty familiar. Watch this. Anderson finishes with a season-high 23 points. Then Duke finishes off the Seminoles. Anderson with the block. Shane Battier is there to clean up, and the Blue Devils win their 12th straight and remain undefeated in the ACC. 98-73 is your final. Elsewhere in the top 10, the Huskies improved to 15-0. The Bearcats bounce back from their first loss to go 16-1. There's a good game on the coast between UCLA and Stanford. The Wildcats win. North Carolina losing early in the second half. 15th ranked Mogul's of the WAC taking on Arizona. Auburn remains undefeated and Michigan State drops to Illinois. Over in the Big Ten, Bobby Knight and his 20th ranked Hoosiers on the road to face Purdue, the 11th ranked team in the nation. Gene Cady's team gets picked on early. A.J. Guyton drives the baseline and gets the floater to fall. 26-13 Indiana and the Hoosiers never look back. Late in the second half, it's Luke Rector for two of his 24 points and Indiana gets the 87-76 Big Ten win on the road. Then on the local board, Utah State is on the road against Gauchos. The Wildcats are at Eastern Washington. T-Birds lose in overtime to Chicago State, and later on, BYU takes on Hawaii over on the islands. All right, a quick programming note, the Jazz begin training camp in, a couple, in next week, and KJazz TV will have all the coverage, beginning with a special First edition of Home Court Video Magazine at its new time slot. Join Steve Brown live Sunday night at 10.30. Steve's guests will include jazz coach Jerry Sloan, plus general manager Tim Howells, along with vice president of basketball operations Scott Layden. 
That's Home Court Video Magazine, 1030 tomorrow night. Plus, tune in Wednesday night at 9 for a jazz special where you'll see jazz owner Larry Miller and several players. Two great shows you won't want to miss. Still to come on the Phillips 66 Halftime Report, maybe I'll find my voice, and we'll also take a look at Greg, Greg Marsden's new show place. But first, a chance to win Connie's Deep Dish Pizza. See if you can answer tonight's trivia question. How many consecutive regular season home meets has the Utah women's gymnastics team won? If you think you know, dial 990-UTAH. That's 990-8824. We'll have the answer when we come back. Western Athletic Conference Basketball. It can. If you're serious about skiing or snowboarding, come to Utah Ski and Golf in the attic. You won't find a bigger selection of hardcore ski and snowboard equipment and clothing anywhere in the state. Only Utah Ski and Golf in the attic carry over 20 major brands of skis and snowboards at the guaranteed best prices. We'll beat any competitor's price by at least 10 bucks. Trust the company that's been providing skiers and snowboarders top quality equipment and service for over 12 years. Get equipped at Utah Ski and Golf in the Attic. Ah. On the highway of life, it's nice to meet an honest man. Talk to me. Voice Dream Wireless gives you more. With 10 cents a minute weekdays. Now that's good. More for your money. Guaranteed. Great. And weekends? Do you like parties? Now zero cents a minute. We'll have a great time, I guarantee it. So get voice stream and get more from life, guaranteed. Hello. We're just about ready to get underway, and boy, is this team loaded. They begin by attacking the right side. The team really looks hungry this year. Now they cut back left. Now he cuts right down the middle. He tackles it from behind, but it's too late. It's going, going, it's gone. Victory never tasted so good. Get Connie's Pizza and everyone comes out a winner. Call 98 Great for Connie's authentic Chicago style deep dish pizza delivered hot to your door. How many consecutive regular season home meets have the Red Rocks won? The answer, an astounding 146, including last night's victory over 10th ranked Stanford. Thanks for calling. The winners will be notified by phone. Welcome back to the Phillips 66 Halftime Report. That win last night was the second highest ever for the Utes on opening night. Things just keep getting better and better for Utah Gymnastics, beginning with their new home away from home. I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. It's great. It's awesome. The training facility is awesome. I guess awesome is the way to describe Utah's new Women's Gymnastics Training Center. Well, it is, it is really spectacular. The state-of-the-art facility was designed by Greg Marsden, the most successful women's gymnastics coach in college history. Everything we need for training is in one location, whereas before we had to move all over campus. It's especially convenient to have our training room here and the weight room and um, the aerobics room and everything right here where we want it. The $2 million, 18,000 square foot facility features the latest equipment, as well as a locker, training, aerobics, strength, and rehabilitation areas. He just told me to put together my wish list and then we would go from there and um, I pretty much got everything on my wish list. The equipment couldn't be better. You can ask for anything more. Best training facility in the country, for sure. We're going to be anxious to show it off, yeah. Well, it just so happens Utah is hosting the NCAA National Championship in April. Not a bad time to show the rest of the country who's best in competition and training. I already know that this is, uh, that everybody across the country is talking about this facility. And uh, I know they're going to be anxious to see it when they come out for championships. Utah has always been successful at nationals. Ten titles is the result. But is there more pressure to win when your school is the host? Maybe a little bit, but I don't think in a bad way. I think we're all real excited to compete in front of our hometown. I don't think there's any more added pressure. We're always, I think that the team is always looking to be really well at nationals. And same this year, no different. Well, that's it from here. Second half action is coming your way next. <laughs>
there's an easier way to satisfy your chicken craving, the McChicken Sandwich. Just 89 cents every day at McDonald's. The wait is over. It's here. GMC's all-new Sierra, built for all that Utah has to offer. Sierra will take your family to your favorite recreation spot with ease and still travel the city streets in style. For the life you lead, the all-new GMC Sierra is now at your Utah Water Mountain GMC dealer. GMC Sierra sets the standard with leading-edge features, stylish, comfortable, economical to operate at an affordable price. Your Utah Water Mountain GMC dealer and your new GMC Sierra are waiting for you now. What are you waiting for? Now here's the long-range forecast for Sinclair Land. Well, it looks like some snow at higher elevations. And over here, ugh, it could get pretty warm. But whatever the weather, your car will run better with Sinclair gasoline because it's adjusted for each season. Take it from Dino, in every season, Sinclair is simply unbeatable. Hello? Yes, we've got a new cellular plan with your prepayment of activation charges. Prime, non what? Part minutes from cellular six phone offers are not always clear. But ever since Sprint PCS built the only all-digital nationwide network, everything is clear, including the offer. Hello? Sprint PCS is now just $30 for 200 minutes anytime. Wow. Sprint PCS, right now, just a dollar a day. Halftime at Cox Arena in San Diego, California, and the Utes still hold a 17-point edge over the Aztecs, but it's probably not a very comfortable edge right now, especially if you look at the stats. We'll do that in just a moment. Meantime, let's look at the leading scores brought to us by Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular for Utah. Playing before a hometown crowd, Jeremy Killian is leading all scores. Killian opened by hitting a three, then he gets a two, and now another three. And Jeremy Killian's 13 points lead the Utes, a pair of Utes in double figures with Utah holding uh, the edge there, Killian and Miller. Double figures, Harvey with nine off the bench. Jensen and Metal are four apiece, and on the other side of the ledger for the Aztecs, nobody in double figures. Okotier with six, and then off the bench, Barakoff with six. Meantime, Korea and Watts, five apiece and Epps with just one, well below his average. But Frank Layden, we took a look at the halftime stats just a moment ago, we'll let the people at home take a look at them, brought to us by Icon Office Solutions and Canon Copiers, working with you to win. Some numbers there for Utah that may be a little bit disturbing, even though they, they are leading in assists, turnovers, but they're not getting to the line, and they're not shooting the ball very well. Yeah, well, I think that, uh, you know, when you look at the great defense that the Utes play, that's gonna bail you out of a lot of ball games, plus they, are, they do a very good job of, uh, of rebounding, and that's certainly evident in this game. But if I'm a coach and I walk inside and I say, all right, look at the stats, I find out that 30 of my 39 shots have been taken uh, by the guards, all right? That's a little bit uh, too much for outside shooting. Now, some of that has been layups, while the inside players like Metlar and Altoff and Alex Jensen have only seven shots between them. So you've got to go from that outside game back to the inside game, and you know that wasn't lost on Rick Majerus. A coach reads the stat sheet, it tells him sure. an awful lot. And, and right he, now, Utah is leading, but it is far from over. They need to improve in some areas, and we'll be back with the second half in just a moment. Hi, I'm Kevin Jenkins. When we're watching the ball games in our home, we always make sure we have plenty of fruit trays and veggie trays, along with 100% juice. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, thanks, Dad. Hey, guys, save me a seat down there. You know, my kids love apple juice. It's important to eat five servings of fruits and vegetables every single day for better health. It's easier than you think. Just six bites or whatever you can hold in your hand. I'm Kevin Jenkins, your produce greensmith, with the tip of the day. Dad, the game's starting. Hey, guys, here I come. They come to us for many reasons. Because we save them money on what they need with their everyday low price. Because we help them solve their problems and get them back on the road. And because we stand behind the parts we sell with a warranty that's good at more than 2,500 stores coast to coast. Fact is, people everywhere come to us because we're AutoZone, the largest auto parts retailer in America. And there's just no place any better. When it comes to your car, you know who to see.
price selection and service, you know who to see. After all, you know this guy. With AT&T Digital One Ray, this isn't just any phone. It's my, hey Rob, how's the powder in Utah phone? My, I'll take the red. No, make that teal phone. My, how are you doing in college phone? My, can you deliver the piano on Tuesday phone? My, Casey scored a goal phone. The world of wireless has changed. AT&T Digital One Rate. No roaming or long distance charges across all 50 states. So now AT&T can make your wireless phone your only phone. This University of Utah sports broadcast is brought to you in part by R.C. Willie. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Nobody. By your Utah Intermountain GMC dealers, comfortably in command. And by McDonald's. Did somebody say McDonald's? It's Utah by 17 as we approach the start of the second half here. And the uh, San Diego State Aztecs got a lot of work to do. They look at Jeremy Killian. You know, we talked about the two players in the pregame program. Killian for Utah. Watts, the leading scorer for San Diego State. Watts has not been a factor. And Killian has come out and is three of six from three-point range and five of nine shooting overall for Utah. Probably the best shooting percentage on the Utes right now. So the young man yeah. playing before a home crowd has done himself proud. Oh, yeah, the first you know, I, a lot of times guys will come home and they'll, and they'll choke on it. You know, they don't want it in front of the hometown crowd. He actually stepped his game up. I think this is a coming out game for Killian. I really do. I think he showed great poise and got the Utes off to a great start. But let me say this, Steve, you know, one of the things that you want to do in basketball, and I wasn't being critical before of the fact that uh, they were getting too many outside shots, you got to take what they give you. And, and what that's what they're, they're and conceding. And what they're doing. They are conceding the outside shot. Which there's good defense again. Here come the Utes. Lead pass to Killian. He'll finish. Now they're, they're packing it in on defense, and they're getting them the outside shot. What, the only real fault I find with the Aztecs, besides the fact that they can't penetrate this uh, this uh, uh, steel screen defense that, they, that the Utes are setting up, see, is that... Uh, they are not getting back on defense. And that's an unpardonable sin. I don't want to emphasize it too much, but that's the truth. And a travel call, but Frank, that's just like you talked about. There are certain facets of the game you can control. You can run, you can shoot free throws when you get an opportunity at the line. There's nobody in your face. There you are things that you have to do, exactly and you can always right. hustle. You can always work hard. You know, Utah closed the half on a 19 to 8 run, and they held San Diego State for six minutes and two seconds without a field goal at one point in the first half. Now, there's a lazy pass that Watts picked off. And he can't put it down. And of course, uh, one of the things is San Diego, that happens sometimes. The kid went up hard, and, and Miller did the right thing, conceded the basket, and he ended up blowing the jump up. One of the things that uh, they have gone to man to man. Uh, Coach Trinkle has given up on his uh, laid back defense. He's going to come out and play him now and uh, see if he can uh, cut into this almost 20 point lead. And that was a good read that time by Watts as he came through. He just wasn't able to finish it. And Miller did a wise thing. And, and he would have been an unpardonable sin on Rick, from Rick, Rick Majera's standpoint had he not trailed that play. And he yeah. did and came up with a rebound. Yeah, you get the, you get the idea that no matter what the. Killian again. Wow. You know, maybe it's uh, San Diego State sea level. Maybe that's what he needs as you look at his teammates there on the bench saying, gee, he's lighting it up tonight. Well, you know, he's a great shooter, and he's getting a good look, so he's putting them down, you know. But I'll tell you one thing. You get a chance to take a look at those arms on him. He is one powerful young man. In fact, Rick Majerus thinks that maybe he goes to the weight room a little bit too much, works a little bit too much on him, but it certainly isn't affecting his shot tonight. He's in great physical shape, and he's a tough guy, too. Jensen picked up his first personal foul. You get the idea that uh, this team could not, uh, couldn't beat the Utes in a million years because of the fact they just don't have the size and or the skills that the, uh, this Utah team has. This Utah team's starting to come around. You know, and Frank, the first half, that uh, margin was built with Nate Althoff sitting on the bench. Yeah, and so. he is one of the most improved players. Uh, he, Rick doesn't like to hear me say it, but I say he, he'll be your next pro. I really mean that. I, of course, I think uh, Miller and Metal are going to be the next pros, but he's going to be the next big guy we're going to be talking about. Pretty good look by Metal. And the Utes do an excellent job of getting back on defense. Not only when they get back, but they're facing the ball. They know where their men are. Their retreat is very good. That's a fundamental that they do well. Killian, call with a personal foul. Number 
I thought maybe Watts walked with the ball prior to that, but I guess the ref felt he walked because he was fouled. It's the second personal foul on Jeremy Killian. And team foul number two for the Utes here in the second they half. Watts the, uh, tuck his uniform in. You should always respect your uniform. And there's a walk again of Cody A before he put the ball on the floor. Yeah, a little too anxious. That's okay. Those things happen. Coach Trinkle, Trinkle doesn't you know. like it, but he better be patient. <laughs> Utes with a 45-23 lead. This is good for the Utes because they get a chance to play against a little zone before. Now they got some man-to-man uh, -man offense to run. Nice move. Yeah, Mechtela gave the ball to Althoff and then cut through the lane and Althoff and then something like it right back Oh, to yeah, an excellent pass and uh, put it right where he could handle it by the bread basket and he went up and scored. Correa down low, works on Althoff. A no look pass outside of Cotier's shot is good. That was a nice pass, by the way. Yeah, a little no looker. Yeah, not a non looker away to the opposite side. Barakoff checks in for the they're gonna, Aztecs. They're going to be all right in the future. I mean, that's two years down the line. I don't think they're going to be good right now. They're going to miss Watts unless they come up with a junior college transfer or or somebody to replace his scoring ability. Oh, he's tucking in his shirt now. He, that's good. They're playing pretty good man to man defense. Metolo for three, and he hits it wide open looks for the Utes. Yeah, you know, now he only had three shots in the first half. He's had three already here in the second half. So it's something that uh, in the man to man, he gets a better look because they can not they can go inside to him. He can move around a little bit. And I'm sure that Rick Majerus addressed that at halftime. The kick out to Dante Wilson, but it won't go. And Altoff has the ball slapped away and now knocked out of bounds by San Diego State. You feel the pace of the game has picked up a little bit on the part of the Aztecs. And I think that would serve them better, Frank. It's, well, it seemed they were a little bit just kind of foggy or whatever in the first half. Well, my feeling is they can't win, no matter what they do, all right? But you know what? You prepare for other games. In other words, you pick a style out. If it's going to be man-to-man, -man, you stick with your man-to-man. -man, you say, okay, we pay a price maybe now for it, but we're going to get better as the year gets on. We're going to be a lot better next year. The same thing on offense. If we're going to run, running is the way we play the game. You know what I mean? You don't, you can't be good part of the time at parts of the game. It just doesn't work that way. Jensen for three. So now Utah burying the three-pointer that, again, has been conceded to them by the Aztecs. They're not as open a look as they were off the zone, but Utah doing a great job rubbing off oh, screens. And their inside guys get it. Right? Now, you're in, now your forwards are starting to get some good shots. You're getting some balance in your offense. You also get the feeling that all ten guys are more involved in the game. And they're going to rebound better and they're going to defend better. You know what? I mean, everybody's played basketball. Everybody wants to shoot sometimes. How long Correa as the ball went down low to Alpha. So if, you, if you're going to get some shots, you're going to find out you're going to rebound better, you're going to defend better. Oh. <laughs> Adam Sharp checking in for the first time tonight for Utah Correa going out and Joe Mann comes in for the Aztecs. And of course now you have a two guard offense again with Harvey and uh, Sharp being in there. There's Metlo with another shot, pretty good look at the basket. And Jensen, Jensen. looking to keep it alive and hustles to Harvey. Utah opened up this half with a 13 to 5 run, Frank. Yeah, Jensen's Scott Layden's favorite player. He loves it. He thinks he's great. Oh, he's hard nosed, isn't he? Yes, he's he kind is. of an Alan Briscoe type. Well, yeah, player. and he play, plays within himself. You know, he doesn't try to do anything that, that's impossible. There's not a selfish bone in his body, and that's what makes him so valuable to this team. Rick's been lucky to have players like that uh, through the last decade. Barakoff with the personal foul. Big Nate Althoff goes to the line. And Big Nate Althoff is right. Boy, he is getting bigger by the week, isn't he? And he can carry another 25 pounds on that frame, too, Frank. Yep. Well, he's going to be a good player. That's out. His free throw doesn't go. His balance was bad. Shot. You see, when he falls forward, it means he wasn't balanced right. I should check that out right now when he gets the ball back. Because if you shoot it, you shouldn't fall one way or the other. Now, let's see how he does on this one. Much better. Yep. And, and see him fall in and better. out anyway, you know. Just like anything else, like golf or baseball, you always look down at your feet when something bad happens. Timeout on the floor, 15-39 left in this one. It's all Utah as Alex Jensen steps back and drains beyond the arc. We'll be back. I went to my first rodeo when I was 60. Fell in love with it. Bill and I fly to rodeos on Southwest Airlines. With fiesta slow, we are getting to be regulars. 
Bill wishes I would stay home and play bingo. B11. I tell him as long as Southwest is flying, I'm riding. You are now free to move about the country. While there are a lot of places where people buy parts for their car, the fact is more people choose AutoZone than any other. It's because we're the largest auto parts retailer in America, and they save money with our everyday low price. It's because more often than not, we have the parts they need in stock. And it's because we're the only place where they'll find a battery that's backed by a three-year free replacement guarantee. Which is why we say there's just no place better than AutoZone. R.C. Willie celebrates this holiday weekend with incredible January clearance values through Monday. Great values on sofas for $3.99, sofas for $4.99, sofas for $5.99, bedroom values at $2.49, beds at $3.49, beds at $4.99. Well, you get the idea. With your new purchase, get a complete decorator Coke dish set for just $9.99. Enter to win a family vacation for four, including tickets to Disneyland, courtesy of Murdoch Travel. Saturday, free hot dogs and soft drinks. Hurry, this sale ends Monday at R.C. Willie. Aztec shooting woes continue, shooting just 30% from the floor, and they find themselves trailing 54-27. Program note for you. Professional basketball will be getting it sooner or later, but tomorrow night, 10.30, join me live with head coach Jerry Sloan, along with Tim Howells and Scott Layden on our inaugural home court video magazine of the year. That's tomorrow night at 10.30, right here on KJazz TV. Lot to say about the lockout, lot to say about what will be coming up, a shortened season, all kinds of issues to address, and we'll be talking live with the, uh, the brain trust of the Utah Jazz tomorrow night at 10.30. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by AAA for peace of mind on the road. Call AAA of Utah. We're always looking out for you. Well, they probably should start training camp this week, and by the way, to our fans, that will be in Salt Lake City, That's Utah, right. as soon as they get the contract signed. So they got to get the I's dotted and T's crossed right now. Back to action again, inside position. The ball knocked away by Nate Altoff as the Aztecs tried to go inside. Knocked it away and then recovered it, which is real quick move for the big guy. He runs the floor well also. Now the big guys are getting a good look at the ball now. And at the point Back to a zone too, Frank, in that 2-3 zone now. So after the timeout, and Adam Sharp is into the Utah lineup. And I think that's a mistake. I think, hey, you know, your kids, they're going to think that every time they, they uh, get beaten that, they, that they're going to be able to be bailed out by zone. They're gonna, they're gonna, that's a bad thing to learn. Rebound comes off to Watts. Working on a wing against Harvey. He's quick. Look at that little crossover. Now he pulls it up. Down low on the block to Epps. Knocked away but fouled by Hano Metala. You saw the quickness, though, evidenced by Matt Watts that time. Yeah, he's quick. Man. He's a good post-up man. He's good outside shooter. He's got good quickness. I don't know if he's got the pro body. Ball in there to Epps, and you saw Metaler raked him across the arm. So Epps goes to the free throw line. We talked earlier, he's not a great free throw shooter, to say the least, at 47%. Got a good build on him. He rattles one down as Andre Miller reports in for Utah. He doesn't hesitate, he just gets it and shoots it. Doesn't really take a lot of time in game position. Big Al Jensen comes out. Three guards in the game now, Steve. You don't see this very often. You got Harvey's capable of playing in the two guard position. You got Sharp out there and Miller. And Epps hits the second free throw and now full court extended defense. Full court press. And this is good. This is uh, gives the. Uh, and a foul called as Miller tried to go between the two players. That's what you got to do is challenge that defense. You've got to split them and get it out of there and you, use your body and get to the dribble right away. And, uh, of course, now you're going to see them. All right, there it is. There, there could have been the first yeah, foul. Yeah, now you and see. And that's definitely a foul on, on Barakoff. Yeah, I reaching. think what happens is when they move, they foul. If they had held their position, if they hadn't moved their feet and given way, that wouldn't have been a foul. Here's the zone again. The zone's a little more aggressive to the outside shooters. And of course, the patience by Utah as, they, as they're in their three-guard offense. And they get a nice little look at the basket there. But this is a little more aggressive zone than we saw in the first half, Steve. They're coming out playing a little bit. And Andre Miller angry at himself because he knows that was a mental mistake as he walked and turned the ball over. Yeah, one of the things I think young teams and young coaches have to do is try to get your team to get closer to winning before you look to win. Try to get the games as close as then. The next thing you'll be winning. Watts is fouled as he spins. Epps was behind the plane of the board as he mishandled the entry pass. 
and wasn't able to convert. Watts did a nice job on the offensive glass and then spun and was fouled. Epps is a good, strong athlete who seems to make bad decisions. Now he makes young decisions. Epps is a veteran who makes good decisions. He got that ball inside. He knew one thing. He was going to the basket. That's Watts, yeah. Yeah, well, Epps is only a freshman, too, Frank, so he's got a lot yeah, of learning Epps, to do. Epps makes freshman mistakes. Watts makes senior positive moves. And Watts gets the soft touch to fall. Yeah. This guy's a good athlete, good college player. Scores a lot of points, plays hard. Fans like him. Held below his average tonight, though, with just eight points. Now he has nine. Still a lot of time left. And here's the full court press again. And you're allowed to run that ball along the baseline after a score. Now Utah comes down with numbers, and Miller's shot is short, but there's Harvey. And Harvey has it knocked away, and it goes out of bounds off San Diego okay, State. Okay, now. And now there's a foul called underneath. Yeah, that, called on Barakoff. Yeah, because they should have never let the they they give up too many too much position. Watch this now. Here's the fast break. All right, there's the dish. All right, the shot goes up. All right, good effort here. Harvey follows in, gets the thing, and of course he's fouled. And. Uh, Tony know, Harvey, right on his season average. What happens is your your all your hard work. All right, is lost when you, you give up an easy foul like that. But you know what? I, I thought that they got back on defense the last two times more, a lot better, didn't they? Give me a little more immediate uh, in the heads up, please. A little more level, thank you. I, I thought that they're retreating a lot better. Altoff for the basket. I like to see uh, Nate get some breaks because he works so hard. I like to see him get a couple of baskets. Ball goes to Watts. And nice dish to man who can't hold it. That's a tough pass for a big man to handle off. And Sharp throws back to Harvey, who's fouled. Yeah, they were lucky that time. Yeah, they were because, because that you know wasn't why? a good run. No, it wasn't a break. You know, when you're going, they were two on three. And uh, unless you got them outnumbered, bring the ball back out, get something good. Phil Cullen goes in, and here's a look at it yeah. again. You watch, not, not a great job on the part of no. the Utes this time running it. Sharp actually threw backwards, and you can't do that yeah. when you're running that no-touch drill, that yeah. one-touch drill. Yeah, you know, what you do is you recognize. You, you, you immediately realize, and of course, Sharp's a young man, too, just learning the game. And the minute you, you find the numbers are the same, unless you can run and jump over somebody, there's Colin. He passes the ball pretty good. He's going to be a good player. And Miller will penetrate. She's that little one-handed runner. And up and back again. You know, he reminds me, he reminds me of Jeff Hornacek when he throws that up on the move. That little Yeah, he, without leaving the floor, really. Yeah, uh, nice soft touch. And then, of course, the one thing he does is he can really get back after he's an excellent offensive rebounder, Andre Miller. And a 20-second timeout is taken by I the told, Aztecs. I told, uh, I told you, uh, you know, I went back to the office, uh, told Scott Layton, I said, I like this Cullen. I think he's better than, uh, than Van Horn when he was a freshman. Scott ran in, got the book, told me Van Horn averaged 20 points a game when he was a freshman. <laughs> this kid doesn't even average 20 minutes. But I like him. I think he's going to be a good player. Hey, if you've got the thirst, Mount Olympus has the water, pure and protected from a source high on Mount Olympus. It's been the home team favorite since 1898. There is a difference. Mount Olympus water, pour it down. Andre Miller with a little runner. And then the ball is on the floor, and there he gets the put back again. Andre Miller, I'll tell you, he does. He just goes inside and puts that ball up. San Diego State has two field goals so far this half, and the Utes have outscored them 19 to 8 since the intermission. Yeah, you know, if you haven't got anything to do tomorrow and the old man's watching football, get up and see the Lady Utes play 12 o'clock at the Huntsman Center against Hawaii. That's tomorrow, Sunday, 12 o'clock. Ladies take the. Uh... That's Watts with the ball. Take your son and daughters and uh, get up and see the Lady Utes. The price is right, and you'll see exciting. Basketball is only the women can play it. Jensen outside. And yeah, good Miller, ball yeah. movement here, huh? Gillian with the three. No, this time it won't go, but there's yeah. Miller in the lane. Yeah, you know, Miller goes inside, and Killian immediately retreats to the backcourt for defensive balance. That's terrific. See, and they got now Jensen's back there. The hell, they Miller. always protect the backcourt, Steve. That time, Miller with a little yeah. double pump. Yeah, and there's a look at his mom. She's got to be pretty happy right now, Frank. Oh, yeah. Well, she's a lovely lady, and she's uh, seen all the hard work and all the sacrifices starting to pay off. And, of 
because it started with the graduation last June of uh, Andre Miller in four years. And she was so proud of him at that time. Here's a look at Cullen. And there's his mom again. That's why I like sports. Sports is about moms. You know, I mean, they, they, sat, they do all the sacrifice. And the kids play ball and go to school. That's fun. And Watts saw Ooh, what a great, great pass. pass that time. Derek off. Yeah, that was a great pass that made that. The shot was a layup. You gotta make those. 59-35 Utah. They have moments that they look pretty good, Steve. Yeah, they really do. Jensen with a three-point attempt. No, and a rebound comes off, as you always predict, Frank, to the opposite side. It always comes off the, well, not always, 70% yep. of the time it comes off on the opposite side. So your rebound preparation is so important. And it's not jumping ability. Oh, oh what a bounce pass. That's another great off. bounce pass. Two in a row, and of course the, the fans get alive here. It isn't so much how the Utes aren't playing good defense. They are. Those are two great oh, offensive wow. plays by uh, the Aztecs. And Killian outside now. And I'll tell you. Oh, Killian's three, that was way off. That was yeah. an air ball just about. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, Steve. When I come back in my next life, I want to come back to San Diego. What a great place to be, but we have a timeout taken now in San Diego. 11-16 and a Utes in firm control of this one. The Sentinels back. He's a man, he's a heat, he's a man, he's a heat. Back on the beat, he's a man, he's a heat, he's a man, he's a heat. Alexander! Back in the pocket, like a lock to your side, take the door to your mind. And then lock it, adrenaline, pumping, baseline, nothing. Just look at those tough as a man, he's a heat. Clear the building! Get ready for Primetime's most intense action series. Look out! That's really special. The Sentinel. Coming January 18th to KJAZ TV. They clean them. They polish them. They lavish them with extras. Maybe the reason Dodge Ram owners take such good care of their trucks is that their trucks take such good care of them. And now, Ram is J.D. Power & Associates' most appealing full-size pickup for the fourth consecutive year. The rules have changed. Six days. 24 teams. Playing 22 games. In one amazing 24-hour city. The 1999 Quest Western Athletic Conference Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 1st through the 6th in Las Vegas. The numbers say you gotta go. A moment ago, it was Watts down low, and watch this bounce pass as we look at our Southwest Airlines replay. Here's the bounce pass to Correa underneath the Frank. That's a great move. He's made a couple of great passes. Yeah, you know, the, the game is in parts, and uh, and learning to win comes in parts. And, that, of course, they saw two great things there that got to give them a lift now. And, Frank, just when you thought it was a good idea to turn bad, K-Jazz brings back the Sentinel. Richard Berge plays a tough cop with a special sense for crime. Don't miss the return of the Sentinel. Monday night at 8, right here on KJS TV. Yeah, it is good. It's a good show, late night watching. I love it. You know, there's so much in sports to win now. You know, people are impatient. That's why we see coaches fired. We see players blamed, you know, a lot of anguish and what have you. But anything good is built over a period of time. The Utes are there. The Aztecs are looking for a future. Good young, big front line players. They're going to be pretty good a year or two from now. Into the game is uh, Small. That is Walter Small, who's come in at the timeout. And now a foul stops play underneath. That time the Aztecs went inside the Correa down on the baseline, and he's fouled by Nate Alba. Well, Nate, Nate gave the baseline away that time, and as soon as he did, he, the only way he could recover is by, by fouling. And he knows it, too, because he was shaking his, his head and had a tough look on his face. You know, any time that you're guarding a guy with the ball, always put yourself between him and the basket, and you always do it on the baseline side. Correa puts this one down. 
And, and one thing in the plus column for the Aztecs, they're shooting much better from the line tonight than they have on the season, and they're getting the opportunities. And they're getting to the foul line, they're making them, and they're doing it at home. And a pretty good crowd tonight, Steve. It is. As we said before, a nice facility, this arena here. Good this home beautiful. Floor. Yeah. Student section is empty, but that's because they don't start the uh, school semester to, until uh, about a week and a half from now, about a week from yeah, now. I guess. Yeah, about a week from now. And, you know, they uh, they have a nice uh, athletic facility. It's all here on campus. They used to go off campus, and it was an awful facility. Right here outside with the ball to Alex Jensen. He'll, he'll swing it. And now the skip pass across the top leaves Harvey open for the three. But there's Miller on the offensive board. New shot clock for the Utes. Well, that's one of the advantages of being able to use Sharp and Harvey at the other, at the point guard position and use Miller as a forward. Miller made a great move and on a weak side, a terrific pass. A terrific left-handed pass by Medelar. Medelar can do it all too. You know, he's, and you know what I like about Medelar? He's very patient. He's not, not pushing, not looking, you know, hoggish, looking for shots. I mean, he's very satisfied with his game. Helps out on defense. Well, that's the Finnish personality as Okoye gets it. You know, Finland right. didn't ever invade anybody. Now, I'll tell you one thing. Finland is one of the only, is the only country that paid their debt for the uh, for the, the monies back to the United States for the aid during World War II. A little bit of history thrown in here, too. That, that's from the old history teacher, right? Yeah. And and I, people don't know you used to teach high school history. That's right. The Finnish people are known for their honesty and their hard work. And, their, and their good looks. I get a free trip to Finland. <laughs> well, you've been before, I think, haven't you? No, I haven't, you been haven't been there yet. Finland? No, I've been everywhere else. Uh, it's about time that you went. Okoye oh, again, back to back baskets. Well, I'm going to go to Moscow and to Warsaw to see my girls over there play, visit with their families, make sure that they know they're in good hands. And that's not Warsaw, New York, and it's no. not Moscow, I don't know. No, right? I've been to both of those. <laughs> you don't want to go back, huh? I spent a month there one weekend. Good patience by the Utes. They're not, not looking to do anything fancy. Want to get a good shot here. Jensen with the drive, pitches it out, and gets Miller a pretty good outside shot, a pretty good and look at the basket. Nice job boxing out. Tom Miller on the three-pointer. Don't look now, but it was a 27-point lead at 54-27, and, and now it's been cut to 18. That time, Okodia couldn't handle the pass from Barakoff. Yeah. And they turn the ball over as Epson Trenkel comes in. That's Brady Trenkel, the coach's son, number five, will check in Boy. for the first time as Barakoff goes out. The apple didn't fall far from the tree, huh? He looks just like the coach uh, must have looked about uh, 15 years ago. Yeah, he's 5'11", 195, pushing about 220, I think. Yes, he is. He's a Husky guy. Solid kid. Looks like a pulling guard. And one of the things I think that, uh, you know, when you're, you're, you're looking at, at a team like Utah, is there's so much poise has been gained in the last few ball games. They just seem to be in such control. Metalos three finds the bottom of the net. In many ways, I think even better than maybe some of the previous uh, greater teams uh, have been. I, and that, I think you have to put a lot of that in Andre's hands. One of the things, if I'm a, an opposing coach, small shot is an air ball. If I'm an opposing coach, I say, don't let Miller do get to the offensive board and rebound. Again, I think that's one area that, that a lot of teams fail in their scouting reports, saying keep him off the boards because he always gets a few key baskets in every game, a few key offensive rebounds. There's the pick. A little dish to the wing for a two-point basket that time. Tony Harvey. Well, Utah they, has know. the lead 66-43, and San Diego State wants a 20-second timeout. So time now for our Mount Olympus 20-second timeout. Mount Olympus spring water from a protected source. Hi, on Mount Olympus been the home team favorite since 1898, 100 years. Last year, they're in their 101st year. 101 happy years, huh? Yep, happy birthday. All right, yeah. You know, one of the things uh, that the Europeans brought to the American game is the ability to drive to the basket, draw the defense to you, and then to pitch the ball out to the wing. And a moment ago, Tony Harvey was the beneficiary of just that kind of play. There's Alex Jensen. He kicks it that, over. Yeah. And there's the three-point. Actually, that's Sahano Metal's basket from the corner. Russia came here uh, many years ago, about 25 years ago. And that's what their teams did. And uh, American teams were surprised at their ability to, to drive and dish the ball back to uh, outside perimeter shooters. But that has become the way of the Europeans. 
They don't, because of the wide lane, they don't play a lot of pivot basketball. They don't post up a lot. Which, by the way, I think we should do here in the United States. Well, it certainly brings back the shooting touch to basketball as Harvey is fouled by Trinkle, who blocked him, stepped over and blocked him, and Harvey did the right thing, just took it hard. When you're backpedaling, you don't move as well as a guy coming forward, and Harvey is a great athlete. And the coach's son is upset. Yeah, look at this now. Watch him get it. We'll get a good look at this. See, now he gets in there pretty good. Ooh, I don't know. That could have been a charging foul, but however. His feet, I think, were certainly moving. Yeah. Watch it again. He right was here. moving, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, definitely yeah. moving. Yeah, he's moving, and I, I guess that uh, the fact that he was retreating, he gave that up, but... Uh, he, he gave it all he had. I, I think that's a, that's a call that you should get at home. And you will when you're winning. You know, I think the referees, whether they like it or not, have a tendency to lean towards the teams that are, have winning records and are the teams that are supposed to win. Harvey converts the front end of the one and one. And now he gets the bonus shot. So Harvey, very workmanlike Harvey, just gets it done. He doesn't. And he has 14 points, Frank. It isn't like he's straining to do it. It just comes to him naturally. And a timeout is taken. 7.27 left in the ball game. Utah has the 68-43 lead. We'll return to Cox Arena in San Diego in just a moment. From the very beginning, he was so committed. He stuck with it. He never lost sight of his goal. The hard work and determination paid off. Phillips 66 is proud to sponsor University of Utah basketball. We know performance starts with commitment. that little voice in your head makes you feel guilty for having too much of a good thing yeah we don't either Outback Steakhouse no rules just right Outback Steakhouse, Outback Steakhouse. no rules just right it's the Pergo sale that you've been waiting for at Carpet Giant Carpet One. Functional, beautiful, easy to clean Pergo laminate flooring is on sale now at incredible prices. These are the lowest prices ever. That's right, Carpet Giant Carpet One has the best prices in the state on Pergo laminate flooring. And Pergo laminate flooring is in stock and backed by warranties against wear, stains, and fading. Amazing. And you'll make no payments and pay no interest for six months. Can't beat that. So come to Carpet Giant Carpet One and transform your home from the floor up with Pergo laminate flooring. Why don't you come in and see us? That draw and kick a moment ago, Frank. Let's take a look at right. it on our Larry yeah. H. Miller telescope. Well, you're going to see the pass go out here to Miller. You're going to see Metlock come over and set a block here. Harvey's down here. He's going to go out and hold his position here. You're going to see the drive by, by Miller here and the pitch out. This is just perfect basketball. Now watch him here. All right, here he goes. There's the block. All right, that's good. Here's, here's uh, Miller coming in, making the penetration. Harvey's here. The eyes, the defense is looking out, and you're going to see perfect execution. There's the pitch. And bingo. You always play away from your man. And the minute the, the man looked away, Harvey went to the open spot. Miller saw him and uh, got an assist. And Harvey got a basket. That's great basketball. That's old-fashioned basketball, but it still works. Utah has extended the lead to 25 again. Epps looks to cut it. No, he can't. And they said basket interference on Altoff. I think he just uh, undershot the ball. Yeah, I, I, I don't see that one again. Yeah, you know, I think once the ball hits the backboard, uh, there's nothing you can let's do about Altoff it. Let's see if Altoff interferes. I don't yeah. think, believe well, he does. Let's see if the ball goes up, if it hits the board. If it hits the board, all right, there, it hits the board. The minute you touch it. You yeah, can't. but he didn't. Yeah, he so, touched it after it went up, yeah, I, think, I think. But, yeah. but yeah. I think the official was screened out and figured he, that there was no way that miss was going to come off like that, but it did. Yeah, he thought it might have had a chance to go in, but I don't think it did. But there's again where they drive and they try to, and then they split the defense. Skip pass to Killian, who's been quiet for a while. He wakes up again with a three. Yeah, he has, years ago you say, don't throw a cross-court pass. But now it's uh, against the zone. It's the most effective pass that you can have. And the Utes do it very well because they practice it. They bring the ball up over their heads. They're very strong. A new career high, by the way, for Jeremy Killian. He has 21 points. Played very well tonight. Cody A on the other end, 
And Rick Majerus wants a 22nd time on. He wants to talk to his players. Well, he doesn't care how far ahead he is. He's always going to be coaching all the time, thinking about the future. And that's the way a coach should be. You know what? The score is always nothing, nothing to a good coach. And this is our Mount Olympus 22nd timeout again. Another one. I'm thirsty. I know. I would just, you know, these Mount Olympus timeouts would be great if we had the Mount Olympus. Uh, well, of one. course. Uh, you know, we're here in San Diego with a, the one thing they don't have here. They might have sunshine. They might have grass. They might have beaches. They don't have Mount Olympus. Hey, I'll tell you what we have for you this Monday on KJS TV. It's the Academy Award winning movie Glory. Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman, Matthew Broderick star in that unforgettable story of the Civil War. And it's our late movie. That's 11 o'clock Monday night right here on KJS. Jazz TV. Well, that's a good one, too. One of the best ones ever made. Yeah, it's an excellent movie. Yeah, great so join movie. us. Denzel Washington, Academy Award. Jeremy Killian, there you go. And New he, career high. And I'll tell 21. you one time, we were playing right here. No, no, we weren't playing in San Diego. We were playing the Clippers in California. Denzel Washington is being interviewed by Hot Rod Hunley at halftime. So after the interview's over, Hot Rod asks, what'd this guy do? Who is he? <laughs> he had just won the Academy Award. Oh, I can't wait for the pros to be back again and hear Hot Rod's great voice. That'll be great. Oh, yeah. You gotta love it, baby. You gotta love it, baby. Buy his book, too. What the heck? He needs the money. Sharp, off the mark, and the Aztecs with the ball. It's Wilson, Dante Wilson, trying to gain some separation inside, and there's foul. Good ball low. movement, then. They, I, I thought they ran their offense as crisp, then, as they have in the whole ball game. And there's Trenko. Coach Trenko is not letting up because he had a national championship. And earlier in his career. Final foul, Frank, the fifth foul on Nate Altoff. He comes out. And Cullen will go in to replace it. So yeah. Big Nate gets a seat with 547 left. Nate's a hard worker, but uh, a couple of times because he was standing up, maybe he left his feet, but uh, he and he will have trouble guarding, you know, a guy like this. Well, the it's smaller, a smaller, quicker yeah, guy. Smaller, you know? quicker guy. He was out of position several times tonight and yeah. probably picked up two or three of those fouls because of position. Wilson, uh, he plays better against bigger guys like himself. Uh, and but by by the way, most big guys do that. And I like the idea that now this gets Colin a chance to play a little bit because he's going to be a good one. Wilson with the second free throw, 90-yard mile, mile fastball. Also, he's going to pitch, I guess, this spring in baseball. Been drafted by the Baltimore Orioles. Rebound off to Miller, and a Utsal run. Killian Wing pulls up, goes back outside. Cullen. Swing it to Sharp on the far side. Good move it there. Cullen goes through. And that's not the pass. No, that's the a cross-court pass ball. out. You don't want that. You want a cross-court pass that goes down. But don't forget, Sharp's only, this time last year, he was playing for Alta High School. Miller. And here comes Watson. Miller picked his pocket, but the official says he fouled it before he did. Yeah, well, you know, I like Miller. He does so many different things. He steals the ball. He rebounds. He defends. He, you know, shoots outside, inside, drives, passes. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Smith's Food and Drug Centers, where you can earn 5% off your groceries with our 5% rewards program. Come into Smith's. Check it out. Watson will go to the line. I'll tell you one thing, the referees have had a very easy night tonight. Both teams have played hard, played clean. And uh, these referees, I think, should donate their checks. <laughs> because it was an easy night, huh? Oh, yes. Watts hits the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. He'll get the bonus. He has 11 points as Tony Harvey replaces Adam Sharp in the Utah lineup. And he takes a seat. Now we get a look at Watts again. You saw the free throw shooting percentage, 61% on the season, four of five tonight. And now five of six. And it is a 21 point Utah lead with five minutes and 14 seconds left. A nice, comfortable learning situation uh, for the Utes. You know, this has been a very comfortable game for them. Not a lot of uh, you know, they've, they've played hard, they've played good defense, they've seen zone, they've seen man-to-man. -man. Nice entry pass, and Metal converts that one. Yeah, and see, that's the way you should do it. You got, you got to get the ball inside, because inside, the zone will always be playing those guys man-to-man. -man. So if you get the ball to them, they can use their man-on-man -man moves. And I know one thing, that the, in this zone, that they're not, uh, the Aztecs are not getting good health. And Watts makes a nice baseline spin, scores. I thought he got fouled. That's the move we showed in uh, before the game. Yep. He, boy, he is so quick on the baseline. Woo! I'll tell you, I like him. He's a nice player. I'm not sure he's a pro, 
but uh, he'll probably get a chance. He'll probably end up uh, in the All-Star game in his second year because every time I say a guy can't play in the closes, you know. Very athletic. Yes, he is. And you, when you have quickness, you either have athleticism or you don't. Well, if you, the two things you need to be a professional basketball player is you got to be quick and you got to be able to shoot the ball. Killian on a short clock shoots it at six seconds. Rebound off to the Aztecs, and now quickly Abramowitz comes down. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one to thing. Watch. Herrera got that that rebound in traffic. I was impressed. Skip pass was tipped by Cullen and. That time, Trenko takes it right at Phil Cullen and draws the personal foul. Trenko, here's, the okay. here's the move a moment ago, Frank, you talked about with Watts down on the baseline. The pass from Trenko, now watch this. Ooh, he's, you know, here's a little head boom. fake, yep. He faked on the inside, he got the man moving, and that's why, you know, I mentioned before with Alta, when you got a guy in the baseline, you always guard the baseline side. You always got the guy at the baseline side because that is more where players are going to drive to. Even if it's from, if they're from drive from the corner, they'll go on the baseline. When they spin uh, from the pivot or from the post position, they'll always go on the baseline side. So put your body there and discourage them from doing that. Don't worry if they go in the middle because you're going to have teammates there to help you out. Brady Trinkle and a rebound foul on Correa over the back. And by the way, I could talk about that. For 10 hours, all right. How to how to defend in the in the inside? How to defend from the baseline side? Whether it's in junior high, high school, or it's a, it's in the pros, the players still will have a tendency to give the baseline up. I don't care who you are. Uh, you know, we could do it with with uh, great players in the NBA or great college players or or high school players. Donald Mitchell his numbers tonight: 16 points. It'll stay that way for the moment. Basketball is a game of mistakes, and the team that makes the fewest mistakes wins the most. Good move, then good patience, getting the ball out into Miller's hands. Now good movement. This they were testing to see what kind of defense they're in. They found out it is a two-three. Medlas can handle the ball, penetrates and pitches as he's learned so many times in Europe. Both of the big guys get good position. See how Metal is being played man to man inside. And Miller looked at the clock, saw it was short, took it to the basket, and got his own rebound. Again, the offensive rebounding, as you pointed out, Frank, of Andre Miller will just kill you. Well, it's, it's the little edge he has. And by the way, you know, he does that. You know, he's up at Westminster College playing against the pros. Herrera's hurt. Looks yeah, he's like, going to take a, a seat right now. If Cody comes in to replace him. Looks like he stubbed his toe or uh, sprained his ankle a little bit. And timeout. now a timeout is taken. 3:01 left in this one. Utah 75-53, and Andre Miller. You give him two chances, he'll hurt you. There's miss number one. Not going to do it twice. We'll be back. All right, captains, we're going to have a coin toss now. If there's any team, we'll call it in the air. Um, we want a good, clean game. Um, we're all professionals here. Does anyone have change for a dollar? What? Want to get away? Southwest has your ticket to freedom. For only $99 or less, you can fly coast to coast when you purchase by January 19th and travel January 5th through June 3rd. You are now free to move about the country. The wait is over. It's here. GMC's all-new Sierra. Built for all that Utah has to offer. Sierra will take your family to your favorite recreation spot with ease and still travel the city streets in style. For the life you lead, the all-new GMC Sierra is now at your Utah Intermountain GMC dealer. GMC Sierra sets the standard with leading-edge features. Stylish, comfortable, economical to operate at an affordable price. Your Utah Intermountain GMC dealer and your new GMC Sierra are waiting for you now. What are you waiting for? R.C. Willie celebrates this holiday weekend with incredible January clearance values through Monday. Great values on sofas for $3.99, sofas for $4.99, sofas for $5.99, bedroom values at $2.49, beds at $3.49, beds at $4.99. Well, you get the idea. With your new purchase, get a complete decorator Coke dish set for just $9.99. Enter to win a family vacation for four, including tickets to Disneyland, courtesy of Murdoch Travel. Saturday, free hot dogs and soft drinks. Hurry, this sale ends Monday at R.C. Willie. 
Jazz basketball just around the corner. Our inaugural home court video magazine is tomorrow night right here on KJS TV at a new time, 10.30 every Sunday night. Tomorrow we'll be live with Utah Jazz head coach Jerry Sloan, Vice President of Basketball Operations Scott Layden, and General Manager Tim Howells. They'll all be joining us live, well, so we hope you will tomorrow night right here on KJS TV at 10.30 for Home Court Video Magazine. It'll come your way every Sunday night at 10.30 throughout the season. Believe it or not, pro basketball is around the corner. It certainly is. Yep, can't wait. Meantime, we're inside three minutes here in Utah. Has this one firmly in hand with a 22-point lead. A solid game. Played very well. Crossover by Watts. Nice move. Has it rejected in there. I thought that last week against uh, BYU, the Utes had arrived. You know, they started off at the beginning of the season young group, uh, you know, lacked some patience. Uh, some of the shot selection wasn't real good. I think uh, the uh, Tony Harvey joining the team gave them some more athleticism. Uh, now the Utes uh, just take some time off the clock, yes, Frank. Gave them the op yeah, and uh, they'll run some offense because the only starter in there is Killian, so this is good yeah. practice for him. Yeah, and it gives uh, Harvey a chance to be the leader out here. And they're going to have a, oh, barely got it away. Harvey's shot just beats the clock. And nice Cullen keeps by it Cullen. alive. Yep. And so, you know, I think that this, uh, this is a good kind of game for them. You know, they come off a good win last week. This is a, a road win. And anytime you win on the road. Look at the rebounding edge, Frank, offensively. They did a great 20. job on the boards. They do a great job on defense. And of course, uh, Rick knows. He hangs his hat on great defense. But now they're starting to show making good judgments in, uh, on offense. This is, uh, I think they're going to come along. They've got a good bench. They've got, and this kid starts to score. Uh -huh. I, mean, I hope that this is his uh, prom night. You know what I mean? That he breaks out tonight. This is it. Man down low has it slapped away from behind by Tyson Johnston. Good, uh, good post defense. And uh, a whistle stops play. Yeah, see uh, Rick Majer saying bring the ball over half court. And, uh, and he's going to take a 20 second Mount Olympus. Yeah, I, I, I natural spring water timeout. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Rick. I don't. He didn't want that timeout, did he? I, well, somebody called it to him. Maybe. It was oh, I know what he did. He called timeout to get substitutes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because he's got in, yeah. into the game right now. Yeah. Crockett yeah. and Hughes are both. Okay, I was wondering what happened because he didn't talk to the kids. But uh, you know, yeah, he's got Crockett in there and he's got Howard in there. Ben Hughes. Yeah. And a reminder, our and next Venusia, television yeah. game, Frank, is in two weeks on the 30th right here on KJS TV. We'll go down to UTEP, yeah. visit Don Haskins, the Bear, and his UTEP Miners. Uh, that's a 7 o'clock tip, so we invite you to join now, us at that time. Is Howard from Delta? Is that is that right? You got the, the roster there? Yeah, you know, where is uh, Yeah. He's from Preston, okay. Preston, Idaho. Okay, Preston, Idaho, yeah. okay. Ben, I, I didn't, I thought Ben user. Yeah, all right, he's from Preston, okay. And I think, yeah, he's a good kid. I met some some of his fans one night down in St. George. Uh, some uh, people, I guess his grandparents, uh, they were having a birthday party and they said, do you know Howard? I said, yeah, I like him. He's a good little player. He's just got to be a little patient. Oh, nice move by Shark. And I, I forgot whether he was Delton or Preston or one of them, but Preston, Idaho. I think that... Uh, and Watts casts that's up. That's desperation. Crockett no. has the rebound. Never User has the basketball. Never take a bad shot. Now, these kids want to show the coach now that they can come in and execute, can play. All right. And uh, this is what college basketball is like. These guys will remember playing all their lives. Well, Cody A looked to steal it, but stepped on the sideline. And tonight's game has been brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines with fares so low. You have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. So fly Southwest Airlines. Howard had gotten that Texas game, handled himself pretty well. He was put in in a tough spot, and he, he did all right. Crockett, I like, because I know one thing. I just take one look at him and know he's been in the weight room. Well, he's a guy, uh, Crockett, out of Umont High School, also produced Alex yeah. Jensen. Yes, well, I'll tell you, you can look at his build. You can always tell a guy that's paid the extra price. You know, a lot of guys just play basketball, and basketball's easy. The hard part is going into the weight room. All right, that's, and that's for football also. Well, guys, Jeremy Killian takes a seat, yeah. Frank. He has a new career, high 23 tonight. And he did it here in front of the home crowd, fans, huh? 
And, you know, nobody recruited him locally because his grades were so bad when he was in high school and junior college, and he may be on a roll at Utah. So not only has he turned a basketball career into a good one, but also the academic career. And a great oh. night tonight for Jeremy Killian and the Utes. Jeremy with 23 on 9 of 16 and 5 of 11 from beyond the arc. And Utah wins this one 79 to 53. We'll be back as Utah moves to 2 0 in the WAC. We'll put a wrap on this in just a moment. Nominated for nine Academy Awards. It is my job to get these men ready, and I will. They stood alone within a nation torn apart by revolution. Matthew Broderick, Morgan Freeman, and in his Oscar winning performance. Denzel Washington. They fought for country. They fought for honor. They fought for glory. Monday at 11 on KJAZZ TV. If you're serious about skiing or snowboarding, come to Utah Ski and Golf in the attic. You won't find a bigger selection of hardcore ski and snowboard equipment and clothing anywhere in the state. Only Utah Ski and Golf in the attic carry over 20 major brands of skis and snowboards at the guaranteed best prices will beat any competitor's price by at least 10 bucks. Trust the company that's been providing skiers and snowboarders top quality equipment and service for over 12 years. Get equipped at Utah Ski and Golf in the Attic. to satisfy your chicken craving, the McChicken Sandwich. Just 89 cents every day at McDonald's. There comes a point in your life when you outgrow those cute little pickups, at which time you might want to consider something a little more adult, a truck that can run rings around compacts. Dodge Dakota, with more room and more available towing, torque, and power. Magnum Power. Dakota, it's time to put away the toys. Utah, with a business-like dispatching of San Diego State tonight, moves to 2-0 in whack play, and they move to 12-4 overall as they win at 79-53. Let's take a look at our player of the game, brought to us by our Utah Dodge dealers, setting the standard for product quality and customer service. And, hey, it's the hometown kid, Jeremy Killian, who comes home. He has not been a scorer for most of the year for Utah. He's played his role, but tonight he played it to the hilt, 23 points in his 26 minutes. Played both ends of the floor, was on Watts defensively a lot of the night, Frank, and really did a nice job. And he uh, is a guy who just got it done. Beyond the arc, he was 5 of 11, showing the shooting touch, which made him all everything here in high school and junior college. Well, we know he's got a great body. He can shoot the basketball. He can score. But the thing, Steve, with a lot of athletes is you want to know what's inside their head and what's inside their chest, what kind of heart and what kind of confidence they have in themselves. He comes down here where he has a million friends, a lot of people probably wonder why he's not playing for San Diego State. And he comes out and he plays the best game of his career. So I think this is the coming out game for him. And of course, uh, you know, if we look at the positives of this ball game, uh, certainly his scoring was needed by Utah and will be needed for the rest of the season. So congratulations to him. He's worked hard at it. And why isn't he playing for the Aztecs? Because nobody recruited him because yeah. his grades were bad and he's turned a, an academic deficiency. He couldn't qualify at well, East Washington told me, academically. Yeah, he, but when he came to Utah, Rick Majerus puts a big emphasis. He made the honor roll well, last that, se uh, semester. That so. sounds like me. I mean, no, you know, I went, he went to three, uh, three high schools. Three high schools. I, I only went to one high school, but I went I three went times. three times. That's right. <laughs> All right. No, I, I think that that's what I didn't mean to steal your but, line. But isn't that what sports are about? I mean, you know, we, we saw what happened with Andre, and now, of course, this young guy, you know, and you can pay again. We talked about paying the price in the weight room. Obviously, uh, Killian does that because he's got a magnificent build, and uh, he's a great athlete. All right, let's take a look at the play of the game brought to us by AutoZone, the best parts at Auto Parts. Alex Jensen, the quick release by Andre Miller. Unselfishly, the trailer passed to Tony Harvey. And he puts it down. That's our play of the game. Brought to you by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Meantime, Utah, as we said, moves to 2-0 in whack play. 12-4 overall. We'll look at more numbers when we return to Cox Arena in San Diego, California. 
I went to my first rodeo when I was 60. Fell in love with it. So Bill and I fly to rodeos on Southwest Airlines. With fares this low, we are getting to be regulars. Bill wishes I would stay home and play bingo. B-11. I tell him as long as Southwest is flying, I'm riding. You are now free to move about the country. They come to us for many reasons. Because we save them money on what they need with their everyday low price. Because we help them solve their problems and get them back on the road. And because we stand behind the parts we sell with a warranty that's good at more than 2,500 stores coast to coast. Fact is, people everywhere come to us because we're AutoZone, the largest auto parts retailer in America. And there's just no place any better. With AT&T Digital One Ray, this isn't just any phone. It's my, hey Rob, how's the powder in Utah phone? My, I'll take the red. No, make that teal phone. My, how are you doing in college phone? My, can you deliver the piano on Tuesday phone? My, Casey scored a goal phone. The world of wireless has changed. AT&T Digital One Rate. No roaming or long distance charges across all 50 states. So now AT&T can make your wireless phone your only phone. When you pursue an Olympic dream, you are redefining human ability. As you test the limits, you have to be willing to fail. If not, the dream ends. It's in getting back up that new horizons are discovered. It's your life. It's your health. Take control. Regents Blue Cross Blue Shield of Utah. Comfortable would probably be the best way to describe Utah's win, a 26-point margin. Welcome back, everybody. Steve Brown along with Frank Layden. Let's take a look at the leading scores for both, both teams. Brought to you by Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular. And for the uh, Aztecs and Utes, well, double-figure scoring for Utah, four people. Killian with 23 leading all scorers. Miller and Metola with 16. Harvey with 14 and Jensen with 7. And that's not his role uh, is the scoring role, but just a nice balanced game. Meantime, the Aztecs got 15 from Watts and uh, the 14 points from, uh, from Ocotier. And then you drop off to 9 from Correa. But again, Utah doing a good job defensively. They hold a team which is averaging 67.5. And they hold them to 53 tonight, so a good defensive job. And if it hadn't been for the free throw line, the Aztecs really wouldn't be uh, as close as they were. Yeah, and uh, I think the, the thing that was interesting is the few shots that the Aztecs got and the shooting percentage uh, being kept down. You know, I think that coaches look at how we play defense. They look at a few things. They don't want to foul, all right? You want to make sure that you get... Uh, you rebound well that there's a, there's a balance there but you also want to be sure that you keep the other team below their shooting average and uh, of course uh, you know you're going to put them on the foul line sometimes and when they got there they did all right but I thought that uh, basically the defense was what we've come to expect of it I thought the uh, the patience on offense was excellent they got good looks at the basket metal had only three shots in the first half but ended up with 11 and uh, ended up with a very respectable game playing within himself. Harvey comes in, plays a few different positions. Miller plays at the wing. They use a lot of players. So I think this is a very, very good game to, to move on to Hawaii from. And we'll look at the final numbers brought to you by Icon Office Solutions and Rico Copiers working with you to win the field goal percentages. Utah shooting 44, Aztecs 40. But again, look at the difference in the free throw line. That's a huge well, difference there. And then the huge difference on the part of Utah rebounding, especially in the offensive glass on the turnovers. Sure, and, and I'd rather shoot 44% of 72 shots than 44% uh, of 43 shots. So, you know, there's a big differential in the amount of shots taken, and that appears uh, because they don't get the ball uh, off the backboard. All right, we'll be back with a final thought in just a moment. But the Aztecs fall to the Utes in whack play. Dayhawk is alive. I'll take the whole world soul by soul. Resurrected in the body of Hercules' best friend. An all-new Hercules. Then, Sarasina. Meg, Joxer, Ow. and the King of Thieves hijack the kingdom's hidden treasure. Mr. Stinky. It's adventures in babysitting. Follow the 
on an all-new Zena. Saturday after the Utah game on KJAZZ TV. When it comes to your car, you know who to see. For price, selection, and service, you know who to see. After all, you know this guy. After transferring from another school, I found the semester system easier in fulfilling my requirements. It makes us more competitive in the job market because we get out of school just as early as other schools. We get more time to cover the material. You only have to register two times. Most textbooks are written for the semester system. The year seems to go by faster, and you can get more credits. Because we get out a month earlier, I've already lined up a great summer job. Hi, I'm Kevin Jenkins. When we're watching the ball games in our home, we always make sure we have plenty of fruit trays and veggie trays, along with 100% juice. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, thanks, Dad. Hey, guys, save me a seat down there. You know, my kids love apple juice. It's important to eat five servings of fruits and vegetables every single day for better health. It's easier than you think. Just six bites or whatever you can hold in your hand. I'm Kevin Jenkins, your produce greensmith, with the tip of the day. Dad, the game's starting. Hey, guys, here I come. Utah with their second Western Athletic Conference win. They're 2-0, and, oh, and they head to Honolulu, Hawaii for a Monday night, big Monday matchup against the Rainbow Warriors. But tonight they got the job done in workmanlike fashion, Frank. Yeah, when you're going to make a big trip like uh, going over to Hawaii, you want to hope that you have a, not an easy game, and it certainly wasn't an easy game, uh, but you want to be able to use a lot of players, cut down the amount of minutes uh, that your core players play. All right, let's take a look at our next television game because it comes to you two weeks from tonight right here on KJAZZ TV. As we go to El Paso, Texas, the UTEP Miners next in the Ute sites. And that's January 30th, 7 o'clock right here on KJAZZ TV. We invite you to join us for that one as well. And also coming up on KJAZZ TV tomorrow night, our inaugural home court video magazine of the new soon-to-be-released NBA season. And uh, that'll be at 10.30 live with head coach Jerry Sloan, general manager Tim Howells, and vice president of basketball operations Scott Layden. That'll be tomorrow night at 10.30. That's going to wrap it up for us. We are just about done. We will be joining Dear John in progress. And then at 10.30, Hercules will be coming your way. Sorry you can't get home in time to see that. But, well, uh, I'm going to try and get home in time to see the women play tomorrow at noon. All right. Utah basketball, executive produced by Randy Rigby on KJS TV. Tonight's game directed, as always, by Travis Henderson. Graphics producer is Patrick Carroll. Tonight, Utah defeating the Aztecs 79-53. And Andre Miller with his offensive putback, but Jeremy Killian in his homecoming led the way for the Utes with a career-high 23. And the Utes go to 2-0. Good night, everybody, from San Diego. Now here's the long-range forecast for Sinclair Land. Well, it looks like some snow at higher elevations. And over here, ugh, it could get pretty warm. But whatever the weather, your car will run better with Sinclair gasoline because it's adjusted for each season. Take it from Dino, in every season, Sinclair is simply unbeatable. For an efficient, clean-burning Bryant furnace with natural gas by design, see temperature control in Ogden or Turner Heating in Orem. of Utah Sports Broadcast has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go.